Welcome in to a Friday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Remember, we're always brought to you every day by Go Chevrolet online at GEAUXChevrolet.com. Holler at them online. All of the inventory is there. If you want to stop in and check out the used car lots, you can do that at uh, Go Express Auto Sales, which is on Florida Boulevard in Sherwood Forest. Uh, Go Express Auto Sales right here in Baton Rouge. And, of course, Go Chevrolet out in Laplace, Louisiana for brand new cars. Always online, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. Big show today. Frank Wilson going to stop by at 8 a.m. this morning. We're going to talk to the associate head coach of the LSU Tigers back in Baton Rouge after a head coaching stint in San Antonio with the University of Texas San Antonio and, of course, over in Lake Charles, over at McNeese, now back in Baton Rouge at LSU, recruiting to the state university of his home state. We'll talk to him about what it's like being back here at 8 o'clock this morning. If you got a question for uh, Coach Frank, you can get inside of the chat. As always, we appreciate your interaction. Make sure you hit the like button, the share button, the comment button. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please start off with a subscription. And if you want to know when we go uh, live, you can always just hit that notification, that bell, uh, and you can get caught up. Good stuff from Rohan last night. We're where my dog's at, Eddie Kennison was in studio. Shout out to Jamil and Stewie and all the crew over there and where my dog's at as they are uh, getting ready for football season. But Lloyd is here this morning. Uh, Stewie is here, uh, of course, uh, with uh, uh, on the uh, the ones and twos. And <laughs> Jamil is here. What's going on over there? We got uh, everything's we, off. Look, we got Joe Nado. Yes. Yeah, we got Joe Nado. <laughs> it's all right. That usually this. Uh, what do you have to do? Take two steps forward. So, no, yeah. take two steps back. You take three steps forward. It's something like that. Yeah. We're in the throes of a little. Yeah, change. Absolutely, is change is happening. Uh, one thing that is not changing is LSU on the recruiting trail, and they are picking up uh, uh, players uh, over uh, over the last couple of days. It has been uh, one of the hottest streaks that we can recall here. In Baton Rouge, as LSU picked up a offensive lineman, their first Paul Mubanga from uh, he is from Buford, Georgia, and uh, just started playing football a couple of years ago. And if you look at him physically, man, uh, he looks like he's going to be a freak uh, from the athleticism, the size, the length. Um, really looking forward. Actually, we uh, we confirmed uh, offensive line coach Brad Davis will be in studio with us one week from today. We'll be back from SEC Media Days next Friday. Remember, all next week we'll be out Monday through Thursday, but we'll be over in Georgia where we'll be sending content back. We'll be with you uh, every every morning, 7 to 9 a.m., and then we'll be doing some stuff uh, from Media Day that we'll be sending back. And then Jacques and I, We'll be on the WAFB digital properties each evening at 7 o'clock, actually starting on Sunday night. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, we'll be uh, kind of setting the stage and wrapping up the day over at SEC Media Days at the College Football Hall of Fame over in Atlanta. So really looking forward to that. Uh, and close to Atlanta is Buford, Georgia, where Mubanga uh, pledged to LSU a part of the 2023 uh, uh, recruiting class for LSU as the Tigers continue to surge here uh, in this uh, in this recruiting class, and it looked like the entire time Michigan uh, was going to be the leader, was going to be the team that you had to beat out, and Brad Davis uh, did a great job uh, as far as doing that. Uh, Mubanga was telling one of the uh, services that cover recruiting, um, he seems as a fit, uh, he just seems for me as a great fit. He can use me at any position possible, as he was telling me in recruiting, talking about Davis. He's talking about all the guys that he's coached have definitely gotten better. You can tell that they were impressed with him and they were what uh, they were able to accomplish. They all love each other and they're going for the same goal, uh, is what Mubanga uh, was telling Go247 uh, as he pledged to LSU yesterday. So uh, the recruiting trail stays on fire. For LSU when they pick up their first offensive lineman for the class of 2023. We will talk to Frank Wilson uh, coming up here at 8 a.m. this morning about uh, what may be different in um, the approach or what may be different this go-round uh, in recruiting or if anything's changed uh, and what his relationships like uh, are like now uh, after a couple of stints with the head coaching spots and stops uh, and what it's like to be back uh, in his uh, his assistant role uh, for LSU. So really looking forward to that uh, coming up at uh, at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, daily, our phone line is brought to you by Metropolitan Health Group. 
uh, real doctors, real solutions. Shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Charlie Harvey and Jason Ramazan uh, on the phone line today. We will talk uh, to Nathan Velasquez uh, coming up here at eight thirty this morning. We'll go up and talk to Nate uh, about what's going on in Hollywood, and then at eight forty five this morning, uh, Iversteins, as always, bringing you our Foodie Friday samples. Uh, in which uh, Big Josh is coming through here this morning. Said he's coming with a surprise. Oh. Uh, said he wasn't going to let us know what was uh, coming uh, on the menu uh, and that uh, hmm. he's going to give us a surprise. What does that entail? I don't know. Mm. What could you, I mean. It's going to be something with meat. No doubt. But I guess if you go, have you, they did breakfast last week. They did. They went with like the burrito thing, which is very standard. Awesome. Promoting awesome. the menu. Yeah, they were great. And so I'm just wondering if it's like going to be a surprise in terms of this is not normally what you would have for breakfast, or if it's something we've never even heard of before. Not a lot of interaction with you here on this Friday morning. <laughs> I guess Lizzie. not. I don't know. Your question fell flat. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's still a good question. <laughs> it's just not a lot of answers. What's going there. on what this weekend? What y'all do before the show? Jesus. Jesus, man. Everybody, what's going on here? Ro kept y'all up last night? I saw uh, some yeah. champagne glasses. Uh, in I there. saw the Crown Royal bottle empty in the trash can. I did not drink that for sure. Did not. What do y'all? I'm gonna start coming on Thursday. Hey, Thursdays is a night. It's, it's a night, coach. <laughs> it's a sneak. You can it, the, the studio smells a little different when you show up on a on a Friday morning. It's Jamaican, <laughs> yeah. right? The jerk rub. That yeah. Jamaican jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Ro for called sure. his mom last night on live. Oh, oh wow! He started, he started crying on the phone. Did she yell at him about smoking on in public? Yeah. She did? She was like, hey, you curse too much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hang up the phone. <laughs> yeah, literally. He was like, all right, you my mama, bro. <laughs> I love you. Uh, make sure you're following Where My Dog's At on YouTube, man. It's a good show. It's growing on uh, It's growing uh, on uh, on Thursday night, 6 to 8 o'clock, uh, as uh, Rohan is there. Uh, Monday and Wednesdays, of course, mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Uh, when then uh, this afternoon, Mikey will originate from... Uh, uh, Uncle Earl's, is that'll be 4.30 to 6. Uh, big news yesterday with LSU football, as we said, with the recruiting news. Uh, but then, I, I don't know if this was uh, breaking news, but it became official yesterday. Uh, but Kayshawn Booty is going to wear number 7 uh, for LSU. You saw the social media kind of start to roll out early yesterday uh, with Kayshawn, Boot, uh, with, with, with Kayshawn uh, sporting the number 7. Tyron Matthew uh, was sharing messages on social media, showing his support where it said it don't stop. Matthew tweeted that out, talking about let's go seven. Uh, and we all know the tradition of this number uh, has got a ton of star power uh, dating back to uh, names, uh, even like Ali Highsmith and Burt Jones, who you can throw in the mix. But it really felt like it started with Patrick Peterson, Tyron Matthew, uh, DJ Chark, uh, Leonard Fournette. Uh, you Grant have seen Delpit, yeah, Jamar Grant Chase. Delpit, Jamar Chase. You've seen all types of superstars wear that number. So Kayshawn Booty, Derek Stingley Jr., uh, Kayshawn Booty is just the next in line uh, of guys that uh, have represented that number and feel like it just fits. He was here uh, a couple of months ago when uh, rumors were starting to swirl on, on him wearing the number, and he never backed away from it. Uh, if you remember, he sat uh, right here on this set and really was – uh, talking about how he wanted it, he he wanted to wear the number. Uh, he he wanted he wanted the pressure that comes with wearing that number. Uh, and I don't think that there was any doubt all along uh, that if he was on board with it, like it sounded like he was a couple of of months ago when he was here, um, that he was going to get it. You know, it was it was only a matter of time before Booty was going to get number seven. And look, man, uh, you know he deserves it. He's LSU's best player. Uh, if he is fully healthy and he is right, which you know, surprisingly to a lot of people, he looks like he's good to go. You know, I mean, I I think that people were kind of waiting to see in fall camp to see what, you know, percentage he was going to be at. But if you saw him running around the Manning Passing Academy, we've talked to him, like we mentioned, at the LSU football camp last month in June with Brian Kelly. Um, and then, you know, talking to a couple of his teammates that are throwing with him regularly and daily. Um I mean, Kayshawn is Kayshawn, you know, and if Kayshawn is Kayshawn, you know, potentially he's he's the most explosive player in college football. I mean, really and truly, I I, I say that unbiasedly, you know. I mean, if if you look at the numbers and the pace that he was on last season, every single time he touched the ball, something was going to happen, whether it was first down pickup, positive yardage, or game breaking play. 
I mean, you know, the the the, the UCLA game is is a great represent the Auburn game. I mean, it just every time he touched the ball, something the the, the scoreboard was changing. So, I mean, if you can keep him fully healthy, he's obviously coming in with a ton of motivation. This is his money season. He should put himself into a firm first-round wide receiver, possibly the first wide receiver taken off the board and potentially a top-10 pick, maybe a top-5 pick. With the emphasis that they have put on throwing the football in the NFL and for as many times as they throw it down the field and if – you know, franchises, let's say Jacksonville's in the top five again last, you know, coming up next year, which they probably will be. I mean, they don't have a number one target. They don't have a guy that's, you know, feels like a a, a big time threat for them. They got a franchise quarterback. They need a wide receiver. If they're in the top five again, why are they not looking at Kayshawn? And if he comes through and has a junior season like he was on track to put up the numbers in his sophomore season and like the way he finished his freshman year, I mean, how can you bet against this cat? So I, I expect Kayshawn to be Kayshawn. I love to hear that he's already healthy and running around out there and really gaining his confidence going into fall camp. He's embracing being number seven. I, I, I anticipate a, um, you know, a money season for Kayshawn. I, I expect him to, 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 to firmly place himself as a first-round pick and a high first-round pick after his junior season. Do you think that the relationship with Brian Kelly, like this is kind of like the cherry on top for where they started and where they ended up? Like it felt like Brian Kelly kind of wanted him to prove a little something to LSU to that he was all the way bought in. And by the end of spring, it felt like they really got there. Like from what BK say, he was like, the only thing I know is his last name, to now he's given him like a – one of the time-honored traditions that's become at LSU. Well, I think, you know, we, we, we've talked a little bit about this, um, you know, kind of going back to the start of the relationship, was Brian Kelly took, at the time, I really thought a hell of a risk, right? But then mm-hmm. when you step back and you think about it, in the grand scheme of the whole picture of LSU football, Brian Kelly is firmly secure in his job security with just signing a 10-year contract with, you know, a ton of the money guaranteed to him. So, you know, barring some type of incredible embarrassment and the wheels just falling completely off, which I don't feel in anybody anticipates that happening, I mean, Brian Kelly's going to be safe, <laughs> on the job in year one. It would be very helpful to him in year one if Kayshawn and he were on the same page. And I think in the first few weeks of the relationship, it looked like they were really far off from becoming, you know, just respective of one another, right? And I think Brian Kelly kind of behind the scenes tried to do some things to, you know, introduce himself and, open up the line of communication to his superstar. And things just didn't vibe at first. So Kelly went to the media, which you rarely see anyone do at the collegiate level when they're talking about their team, especially about their superstar. But then you throw in the fact that this guy hasn't even coached a game at LSU yet and has only been on the job for maybe a month and a half at the time is calling out Kayshawn publicly and calling him out in the sense of, hey, i got to see it to believe it on Kayshawn. I hadn't seen anything yet because I hadn't seen him. And during this time, Kayshawn's coming off of his surgery. He's getting all types of NIL deals. He's, you know, really kind of putting himself out there. Some things are happening behind the scenes to really kind of make sure he's going to be at LSU long term or at least for this season. Once those things get done, Kayshawn starts to rehabilitate the ankle. The relationship with Kelly starting to kind of firm up. And then, like we, we painted the picture a couple of weeks ago when we were at Brian Kelly's football camp, I'm telling you, man, like it was as if they had been tight since day one. Kayshawn sought us out, not necessarily 
me, but he and I were just happened to be walking at one another, you know, on the on LSU's practice facilities, uh, you know, practice fields. And the first thing he says to me is, "I'm 100. percent I'm 100. I'm ready to go. Like I'm out here running. Like uh, okay. Like all right." <laughs> You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't ask him. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> need a prod for it. I mean, just kind of like, yo, what's up, Kay? Good to see you, man. Like, you know, I'm running full speed right now. I'm 100%. Like, it's good oh, to know. okay. Okay. And then you get a couple of the, the shots of, of him and Kelly kind of, you know, side by side, talking, going back and forth, obviously respecting one another's company and what one another can do for each other. Because, you know, I mean, in a perfect world, they both need one another. But as the, 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 the scale would say, Kayshawn needs Brian Kelly more than Brian Kelly needs Kayshawn. Is what we've said all along. You know, I mean, Kayshawn's not sitting in a position where he's got the luxury like the past two number sevens have had. Think about it. I mean, Jamar Chase and Derek Stingley Jr., they didn't have to play football to be a top five pick. They didn't. They were. <laughs> Kayshawn, he needs to he needs to be on the field to prove that he potentially could be a top five pick, top ten pick. He's got to play. He's got to answer some questions that scouts have on his durability, his health, where he is right now, and can he still produce at that level after multiple surgeries in the offseason? So he needs to play, and he needs to play at a high level. And one thing that looks like in the offseason is that he knows it, he's motivated, and he's ready to go. So throwing number seven on his back feels right to me. Like, it feels like it fits. He deserves it. Now go ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, go be, go be Kayshawn. Go be a first-round pick. Go be a top-ten pick. I mean, it felt like through the first four games of last season, every time he touched the ball, he was going to break it. He scored every 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 four times he touched it. He scored a touchdown. I mean, that's <laughs> stupid in that's college stupid. football. That's Barry Bonds playing baseball. Yeah, I mean, it was like Leonard in sophomore season. You know, I mean, it just every time he touched it, you were like, "Here he goes, something's gonna happen." Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it got to the point where you were like, "Find Keisha, get him the ball." Yeah, more. Exactly, exactly. And then, I mean, UCLA was the, obviously the first game of the year, but what he scored three times. It's like, can we not get? Can we not find more ways to give him the ball than you saw or incorporate like some pop passes? Stuff like that, and obviously he gets hurt at Kentucky. But the way the way he was trending, he was probably going to be at least in the finalists for the Blitnikoff, no doubt. Like he was having that type of year, and obviously whenever he got hurt, the wheels kind of fell off. Like he was holding that offense together. Then you saw Max Johnson start going, "I don't have, I don't yeah. have, I, I got weapons, but I don't have my guy." You yeah. kind of forget the play he got hurt. He caught the ball. Yeah, and yeah. It, it looks bad too. It looks bad, but he caught the ball. He did on the sidelines. Ah. Yeah. Kentucky? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all uni team, too. Mm-hmm. That's what I said. Seven's going to look right. I mean, he's going to look great mm. in the uni. I mean, Especially since he's got little... He looks so good in that UCLA game. Yeah. Just, Ooh, like, just running the around grass. out there with the mountains behind him, the sunset. <laughs> I mean, it was just Look like, at one go. Look at this guy. It looks like a Corvette out there, and bro. And so Stingley. Ferrari. He looked so good first yeah. game in seven. You're like, so this team too. is put together. And yeah. then you start, you know, you talk yourself into it. Like, yeah. oh, she I mean, might we, be good this year. I mean, year. we did have two Maybacks out there. Yeah. yeah. And then not... we forgot to cover the tight end. Yeah. They're only player on the team. Mm. Ford. Mm. <laughs> Ford truck. <laughs> God bless. We watched, like, Probably two minutes of film. Me, Jordy, and Roe were like, well, that's the guy you got to cover. And they threw it to him damn near every play. And like, oh, I guess I wish you didn't watch the same thing we watched. The tight end? Yeah. yeah. We're like, hey, what are they doing? They didn't watch the same film. Take this guy out of the you game. He was 90 on the, like, the third possession of the game. Oh, my God. Uh, it's over, though. Yeah, it's done, man. Uh, remember daily, we are brought to you by Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. Our friends over at Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works can help you out over here in East Baton Rouge, Paris. Remember, we've told you they got two trucks working uh, this side of the river every day. They're originated over in Plaquemine, Louisiana. You can call them. No website, no social media. 225 776 2431. 225 776 2431. Number one in a number two business. They specialize in all works of plumbing. That's industrial, commercial, residential. Get in touch with them today to help you out. Call them up. 225 776 2431. Mention the Jordy Collada show and you'll receive a 15% discount 
from our friends over at Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. No website, no social media. You can't find them there. You got to dial them up. So put this phone number into your contacts list. Make sure and store it under your plumbing uh, services whenever you need those. Just mention the Jordy Colada Show. Save money on it. 225 776 2431 225 776 2431 is the phone number. Get in touch with Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works today and tell them you heard it right here to save yourself 15% on the bottom line of everything that's coming out uh, from our friends over at Barker. Remember, we're going to talk to Frank Wilson coming up here at 8 a.m. this morning. The Tigers got their first offensive line commitment yesterday uh, and they have stayed hot on the recruiting trail uh, as well as uh, picking up the top two running backs in the state during this recruiting cycle, talking about Caleb Jackson and Trey Holly. Um, I, the more that I look at these two guys, the more that they remind me of the class of Dominic Davis and LeBrandon Tofield that they signed together in the late 90s where Tofield was coming out of Independence and Dominic Davis was coming out of Bro Bridge. And they were the top two running backs in the state of Louisiana uh, in that cycle. And they both complemented one another incredibly well. Rohan would be a great... Uh, resource to talk about those guys because he was their teammate uh, for two seasons uh, while they were here in 2000 and 2001. Dominic Davis was an exclo- it was an explosive punt returner. He was a kickoff return guy. Uh, he was also a guy that you could you know you could hand it to him like 25 times a game. I mean he was he he, he didn't mind being a workhorse for you every night. Now obviously Totefield was you know he was kind of the horse of of. Uh, you know, of that backfield. I mean, you could just feed it to Toefield 30, 35 times a game, and he just pound you. And, you know, by the third and fourth quarter, you just kind of were getting out of his way. You didn't want to hit him because he was just he, – he was so physical when when he would run at you. And Jackson has that style where you watch him play, man. There's a lot of people in the third and fourth quarter that just kind of like step to the side on him because he's been – you know, it's just been hell. Abusing you. Yeah, he's just been busting you for – for, for two hours, and, you know, you're just like, man, you, you know, like, fall forward here. I'll jump on your back. Uh, and, and Holly, I don't know that much, but I, I know uh, I've watched him play just on film a little bit, but, you know, Sean Fox, who's a good friend of ours up in Monroe, and we, we jump on his station um, in on Thursday afternoons on his radio show, um, and Foxy does a great job up there. Uh, with covering all things North Louisiana uh, and talks a lot of LSU Saints Pelican stuff up there as well. But when it comes to recruiting and it comes to, you know, North Louisiana guys, I mean, he told us about, uh, you know, Will Campbell five years ago. <laughs> I mean, like uh, he, he was he's he's really dialed into all that stuff that's going on. And, and Trey Holly, you know, I mean, he was a guy like three years ago. He's like, LSU's got to get this guy. I mean, I'm just telling you, like LSU's going to have to do what they got to do to get this guy because everybody in the country at some point is going to find out who he is and going to come knocking on, you know, Union Parish's door. And, you know, they they were. And Frank Wilson uh, was able to get Holly very early. Uh, but, you know, I mean, he's kind of that, that more um, scatty, you know, a guy that you can throw it to out of the backfield, got a little shake to him, got some cut to him, probably could return some punts for you if you needed it. Um, but, you know, when you, you, you watch those guys and – you, you 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 hear um, you know just in recruiting. I mean that's just kind of the, the the way of recruiting when when you see a guy or you go through a cycle and somebody reminds you uh, of someone. Um, you know that's usually kind of the comp. That's usually kind of your, your your measuring stick on on recruits at least early on, and that's some of the talking lines and and talking points. For me, that's what this class kind of reminds me of, and it was a great bounce back year for LSU um, in recruiting that position, right? I mean, like, you, you, you completely... Flipped the script of what happened last year. Yeah, you dropped it. Yeah, I mean, you dropped the bag, literally, you know? I mean... <laughs> Fumbled um, the bag. On, on the top two prospects in the state last year, and then to turn around, you know, in just year one, which, you know, I mean, Sherman Wilson pointed it out yesterday, and you don't really think about it. LSU's still playing catch-up. From a relationship standpoint, on this class, you know, I mean, last year's cycle, I mean, they hit the ground with just a couple of weeks left before, you know, a couple of signing periods. I mean, they were playing from so far behind that, you know, I mean, once you looked up and started recruiting the class of 23, I mean, you were. I mean, yeah, the previous regime didn't even hand off the baton. They threw it in the stands. Well, I mean, I mean dude, you can't they, run the they, race, dude. Like, had, what am I supposed lock, to play? You had locks on some high school doors 
for LSU. I mean, like, they had to go, like, reestablish themselves at Manny. Like, I mean, like, Manny's got, they got dudes. They got prospects. I mean, it's not just Tackett Curtis. And they're going to lose Tackett Curtis because they had no relationship. No, but they have another safety or a corner yeah, there. Yeah, they, no, they, got, they got sophomores and freshmen, and they got players coming up over there, man. I mean, that's not the high school that you want to be blackballed yeah. from. You know what I mean? Like, that's as, as LSU's head football coach, first and foremost, as LSU's football program, you need open access to 95% of the high schools around the state. Like, just from the relationship building that you're doing in the offseason, there's going to be the, you know, the, the, the one or two outliers here that, uh, you know, you've got some coach from Arkansas coaching a North Louisiana team that just, you know, he's telling the Arkansas coach, I'll do everything I can to make sure you guys are first. I mean, that stuff happens in recruiting. But from LSU standpoint, Louisiana standpoint, the LSU program needs to be open and accessible to every high school coach, every high school prospect, all of the guys that could potentially, you know, boost the program. So, I mean, to, to, to cut school, I mean, LSU couldn't get in to Patrick Sertan Jr.'s high school after what happened with Sertan a couple of years ago. American Heritage High School in South Florida. Look up that high school. Uh, Look at the guys the that they have produced Look at the guys that they have in the pipeline. And whatever happened, I, I, look, I don't know if anybody knows the real story on what happened. I mean, somebody does, but I don't know. I, we definitely do not know the real story on what happened with Sertan. And it's definitely not that Nick Saban brought him to the national championship parade and put him in a, you know, in a Corvette and let him be driven around while he was a recruit that flipped him. I mean, that guy was all LSU from his sophomore season, and the night before signing day, he flipped. Now, I doubt the news of him flipping was the night before signing day. I'm sure the people within it knew it like a couple of days before, like, this ain't good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're about to lose the number one player in the country. I mean, you would have had Sertan and Stingley in back-to-back -back recruiting classes. Mm. Now, look, you still get your national championship, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going back. And, but, but American Heritage High School in South Florida is pumping out prospects like, I mean, like Alabama football, like LSU, like Ohio State, like Georgia. And LSU couldn't get into that school for the last four years because of whatever happened with Sertan Jr. and... I mean, this staff had to go go in and, like, totally repair the relationship. Same thing for Jamar Kane when he went up to Baltimore to recruit Deshaun Womack. The same exact thing. I mean, if you remember a couple of years ago, was it Last Chance You that was detailing? Or, no, no, there was a documentary on St. Francis' yeah. High School that I believe you can find on Netflix. You can find it on some streaming service. There is a documentary on St. Francis High School in Baltimore about their story, and Desmond Clowney, Damond Clowney, is their stand-up defensive end, distant cousin of, J uh, of Jadavion Clowney, and he's committed to LSU for 10 months, Eight months all, for a long time. All LSU on the show. Too. A while, yes. And for the entire season, he is all LSU. The signing day, signing day morning, Ogeron calls the head coach at Baltimore, at St. Francis, and they tell the cameras like to get out of the room. And when the cameras are like standing outside the door, they still have the coach mic'd up. And he's like, are you effing kidding me? Are you effing kidding me? You can hear him like, you can't, or you can't be serious. You can't be serious. Like, hangs up, and he like, it sounds like he like swipes the desk. Like, when he finds on, it sounds like he takes the desk. Sex move. Just knocks it all off. And just goes. Berserk. Postal. Nuclear. Right? LSU. When Jamar Kane walked in with the LSU polo on, 
after he had come in with the Oklahoma polo on and the USC polo on, give you, give you an idea of how good of a recruiter Jamar Cain is. Wherever he's going, these guys are coming with him. He walks in with the LSU polo on. The St. Francis High School coach tells Jamar Cain. He told us a story right here off the air. Guy told him, get the, get out of here. Get the bleep out of here. This is a guy that Jamar Cain and him are like tight. Have been recruiting one another for the last like decade. Know each other. Boys. Homie. Like, like tight. Jamar Cain laughed at him. He was like, what? He was like, get the bleep out of here right now. And Cain's like. I thought I was going to have to fight the guy. I thought because he was saying things to him that were so like, bro. Out of pocket. Watch your mouth, man. Like, don't talk to me like that. You know, like, uh, this is, is, it's you, not. It's still me. It's not. Yeah, right. It, it's not me who was doing that. The guy was so burnt by LSU and so beat up by what LSU had done to his program that even a guy that he was tight with in Kane, now, to give you an idea, look at the way that Kane was able to kind of you know, quell the situation. He was able to repair the, 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 the bridge real quick. I mean, once they sat down, the coach has now been to Baton Rouge, been to LSU, took Walmack and a couple other prospects down here and has kind of, you know, the, the, the relationship has been repaired. But I'm telling you, man, that's three high schools that I just know about from talking to people close to the situation that LSU couldn't get three, those three high schools that are getting recruited at a high level every single year. And two of them, like at the highest level, like giving kids to Alabama, Georgia, A&M, LSU, every single cycle. American heritage down in South Florida. I mean, the University of Miami, University of Florida and Florida State, look at their rosters and look at the kids from American heritage. It's pretty much their team every season spread across those three schools. And for three years, LSU could not get into the parking lot. It's crazy, man. I mean, some of the things that we just don't know, you know what I mean? We just, we don't know, man. We don't, we, we, we had no idea. We got no clue on why LSU's losing out on kids from certain spots and then come to find out that, you know, things that have happened on previous watches previous staffs has barred the program from even getting in so you got to have good enough relationships a guy like jamar kane that can walk into you know baltimore st francis high school and be like yo yo man sit down take a deep breath chill out just a shirt they're all gone you know what i mean like all of the remnants of that that would happen there is Dead and gone, man. There is a new regime, and these are the people that are representing that university now. And it starts to make sense whenever Brian Kelly came in. We were kind of wondering who was going to make, maybe, you know, make who was going to be in the room after the axe swung. And it felt like they, he was just clearing the room no matter what, just because the relationships were so bad on that end, like with whether it be with high school coaches or I guess around the country. Like, I don't know how that happens, how it gets to that point. But Brian Kelly was like, we're just starting from a clean slate. Yeah, like, I can't have anybody here that had because I don't know what happened. Bring the curses down from Manny. Right. Like, like, let's just get them in the office. Who do y'all hate? Sit down and say. It's over. It's, it's, this, is, this is square one. Like, forget what has happened up to this point and starting today, begin to judge the LSU program and watch how it changes. The boogeyman's gone. Right? Like, there's not the insecurity of if you go talk to another school or if you have a guy that's committed and decommits and goes through the process that we're going to bar you, blackball you, like cut our relationship off with you despite your, 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 your program. Like, I mean, it was, it was so, it, it was so dr dramatic. You know what I mean? It was so high school. Yeah, it was so high school. It was very, what we've seen over LSU football the last couple of years in the open you know, like out in the public, it was as much in disarray from behind the scenes. And I'm not going back and stomping on the previous regime. I'm just telling you what the new regime is having to still clean up. I mean, those are true war stories from the recruiting trail on the front line of guys showing up to high schools and being blocked out. Like, hold the door. <laughs> DeAndre Jordan type stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, put a chair in front of the door. Don't let LSU in. Like, yo, 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 like knocking on the door, like, hey, man, Ogeron's not here. 
You know, like they, they, nobody's here from that stuff. It's all good. Let us in. Can we talk? Can we just talk? You know, like crack the door a little bit. Like, Maybe. Hey, look, man. Hey, it's it's. I got the polo I'm on, but I, I just showed up there six weeks ago. I'm trying to clean the mess up. It's still me. You know, all right, come on, come on. Sit down, sit down. You know, like, you? I mean, like it was, you know, 30 minutes of MF. How the, I mean, just going in on how bad the relationship had gotten. So, um, and I guess that's what you get whenever you hear like, oh, LSU has, is playing catch up. They're playing, you know, they have right. to redo Yeah, this. that's and the stuff that's that what... I don't, like, like when Sherman Wilson said it yesterday, I did a little dig and like, man, coach, y'all are still playing catch up in 23 and you're like, and like, Kalata, you got no idea, bro. Like, it's not just we couldn't even writing talk to the hand cast. letters and sending DMs and texts to play catch up. You got to get to the conversation. And there's people that are within those worlds that are saying, uh-uh, y'all aren't allowed here. And they're like, huh? What do we know what happened? What, what do you mean? Like, Cortez Hankton showing up and he's like, "What? I was in Georgia last year. What do you mean? You love me. Yeah, I love you, but I hate LSU. Like, well, hang on, man. Let me change that conversation for you. Because it's not, it's not the representatives that you, you hate that are there anymore. It's me. I'm wearing the polo. We're changing the narrative. Flipping the script. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. Like, come in. Sit down. Let me, let me hear about it. Next thing you know, LSU is now getting a little interest back from American heritage. You know what I mean? You're kind of allowed to come around there and talk to five-star game-changing prospects for whatever reason, that you were closed off to for the last couple of years. So when it comes to playing catch-up and recruiting, and again, we'll talk to the godfather. We'll kiss the ring. Mm. Frank Wilson will be here at 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, just about, and, and look, man, I'm not going to set him up to talk about, he's not going to go in on anything that happened before him, and Ogeron and him are tight, so I'm not trying to get into that stuff, but just what it was like this go around and being at LSU and being out on the recruiting trail and cleaning stuff up. And the more you, you, you really ask around, the more the stuff that we were concerned about a couple of weeks ago of, you know, in-state Louisiana recruiting compared to national recruiting, it makes a lot of sense of these guys that are committing nationally. All these guys had the relationship with the coaches already in place. It wasn't really LSU that stood out. Now, once these coaches are representing LSU, the conversation like like Kerry Cooks told us the other day, I didn't know that there was a, another level to it. You know, he's like, I mean, he's been recruiting Oklahoma, Notre Dame. He was a defensive coordinator at Texas Tech. I mean, he's had some high-level recruiting conversations with some big-time prospects. He walked in with the LSU polo on, and they were like, nah, you, this way. I was like, damn, they got another, they got another level to this it's a thing. VIP for the VIPs, right? Like, I mean, yeah, I mean that's kind of the conversations now that you have access to, in being at a school that has this much appeal, know, juice to it. So, it, it's it, it does make a lot of sense of um, you know Sorry, why you yeah. see the national reach. And why you're seeing the popularity of the national reach kind of be, you know, being able to pull back to Baton Rouge is because the relationships that these coaches had coming in, how far down the line those relationships were, and really how far behind LSU was set for the, the, the new staff to kind of have to, you know, rebuild the inroads, rebuild bridges, rebuild, you know, just kind of communication lines of, of, Recruiting. Um, it's all relationships. It's all relationships. And they didn't have any. That's that, I didn't know it was that bad. Uh, we'll talk to Frank Wilson going. in 15 minutes here on the Jordy Collada Show. Come back with us. We are driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. As uh, every day, we'll be here uh, Friday for uh, for Frank Wilson, 8 a.m., Nathan Velasquez, 8.30, and then our Foodie Friday segment brought to you by Iversteins. Big Josh is going to come through here. Remember the new Iversteins over there on Perkins Road. Perkins Crossing uh, Shopping Center. Just past uh, Essen Lane, if you're driving uh, towards uh, Essen and you're driving towards Blue Bonnet from uh, College in Acadia, and if you're driving that way and you cross over uh, Essen Lane, Perkins Crossing um, 
Shopping Center right there on your left and Iverstein's in that new spot over on the corner. Man, it is fantastic in there. Daily lunch specials. They got breakfast pickups for you. Uh, great fine selection of meat. And Josh will be here in the second hour talking about uh, what's coming up. Foodie Friday. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that share button. Hit that comment button. If you have not subscribed, make sure you pick up the subscription. Hit the bell so you know when we go live. Uh, we'll be right back with Frank Wilson coming up here in about uh, 13 minutes, 14 minutes on the Jordy Collada Show, uh, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Do you suffer from chronic dehydration? Are you looking to improve your athletic performance and you need to get over and see our friends over at GoFlow IV? They're located on Jefferson Highway. Easy to find them online at geauxflowiv.com. Make sure and use the promo code Jordy Colada Show. If you do, they'll take 15% off of your initial visit. Check them out online, geauxflowiv.com. Um, I was I was excited to come to uh, a top level program. I've been at a lot of great places, um, been very fortunate in my career. But to really say that um, you have an opportunity every year, uh, once obviously once we get it rolling to win a national championship, um, there's not very many places that you can say that. So for him to offer me the opportunity to come with him to LSU um, was nothing but but you know humility and, and gratitude. Some Sunday players um, mm -hmm. in that room. But again, you know, it's 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 got to be the total package, the total process um, of of, of buy-in, of understanding what we're trying to get done, um, of figuring out how we want it to get done, but also allowing those guys to be able to play with instincts. Um, for example, I, I think Jay Ward is long yeah. and athletic. He's he's very versatile. He's played corner, played nickel, played safety. Um, very excited about you know Joe Fouché, um, one of the transfer guys that we came in um, because he has a, a dimension of physicality. Um, Major Burns. You know, fortunate enough that he, he was able to come back home. You know, again, he's long, he's athletic. So he gives you flexibility between both field and boundary safeties. Um, and then you've got some guys that you can throw in, like uh, Brooks, um, mm -hmm. Sage, yeah. um, Derek Davis. Um, Todd Harris is a guy that's been around for a while. So I think that we have enough in that room to be successful. Um, but, again, you still want to continue to, to grow and be able to push each point. Yeah, well, I, I think it starts here, you know, and we have a good bit of people on this particular staff who are from Louisiana uh, who know and believe in our hearts that this place produces the best football players in the country, you know, and I think the numbers speak for themselves per capita produce the most NFL players, you know what I mean? So even from an analytical standpoint, it makes sense to take the kids from here because the chances of them playing in the league are higher than if they come from anywhere else. Yeah. Um, I think our brand is super powerful, so we will have to recruit at a national level or there's really no reason that we, we shouldn't, you know what I mean? Because if we can get a top player from another state who can help us win a championship, then of course, right? But um, I think it starts right here in Louisiana and then right here in Baton Rouge. You know, mm -hmm. there's some really good players who are still available that are right here in Baton Rouge. Yeah, well, I, I think it starts here, you know, and we have a good bit of people on this particular staff who are from Louisiana. Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, you know, getting through spring, I mean, most of it was obviously just in installing our the offense. Um, place and I, I think all four guys uh, really made some strides you know, and I think in terms of that and, and showed a lot of positives. Uh, um, obviously, which, you know, you know, I mean, you guys get to talk about all the time. So you guys, you know, but all four have done a great job. They did, I think they really did a really nice job in spring. We'll have to recruit of taking strides forward really no uh, individually we, and everybody and everybody's different you know what I mean? in terms of what they get, need to get better uh, at top and, player and for another state show. who can help um, us win a championship. And then moving into summer and, and, course, and I love right, the way they're working right now. Um, I think it starts um, right here um, in like Louisiana said, I think, and then I think right here in Baton Rouge. You know, there's some really good players who are still available that it was are right here in Baton Rouge. So especially at the beginning, there wasn't as much evaluation, say, the first few days, um, get into the flow, and then I think uh, we got some good opportunities for some guy to get, guys to get some reps, and I think everybody showed some positives. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, getting through spring, I mean, most of it was obviously just different. Um, you have a chance to come to a place with unbelievable tradition, uh, work for the winningest head coach in college football. Um, just be at a state. I've never been at a state where sure. football's king, I, you know, and it, it, if you just dominate your state, 
you're going to get some of the best players that there Start are. on the offense. Sure. Um, and I, I think all four guys uh, really made some strides in terms of that and, and showed a lot of positives. Um, obviously, which, you know, I mean, you guys get to talk about all the time. So you guys, you <laughs> sure. know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the, all four have done a great job. They did, I, I think they really did a really nice job in spring of taking strides forward uh, individually. And, everybody, and everybody's different in terms of what they need to get better at and, and what they need to show. Um, and then moving into summer. And, and I love the way they're working right now in the weight room for Coach Flint. Um, but like I said, I think, I think spring a lot was – it was everything was new for everybody. So th especially at the beginning, there wasn't as much evaluation, say, the first few days, um, get into the flow. And then I think uh, we got some good opportunities for some guy to get, guys to get some reps, and I think everybody showed some positives. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlement and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Sports with it. it. It's just like anything else. I mean, I, I, I don't want to get in, into hyperbole, but it's, you know, everything is. I mean, I, I, frankly, I'm still worried more about concussions. You know, we mm -hmm. don't talk about it much anymore, but, you know, we've, we've kind of helped solve it in, in a lot of ways and make the game a lot safer. So anytime we have existential threats, which this one could or could not be, we just deal with it and we mm -hmm. will deal with it. You know, it's just part of the game. And you know, I don't mind a lot of what's come out of this uh, movement of doing more for the student athletes, but like anything else, it boomerangs a little too far, and sure. you got to swing it back into hey, what we do for the student athletes, and it's a hell of a lot. And and I'm proud of that fact that that we are leaders in doing that. But we're going to do it right. You know, the Tiger Athletic Foundation and and uh, in, in partnership, obviously, hand in hand with what we do. Uh, funded a, a master plan study because I wanted to see, hey, what what we needed, and I, I just didn't want my opinion. I've been sure. a few places, and I have a good one, I think. But you just want to see how and what our needs are, and so we're in that process of looking at it. And obviously, uh, the PMAC is is uh, 50 years old this year, and uh, mm. and probably needs some updating. Uh, it's <coughs> it's got good bones, and maybe we can see what we can do with that. Uh, same thing with all that, uh, you know, property that we have both down Nicholson and where we are currently on Nicholson and North Stadium. Is that, hey, is this the proper use and best use for that? Mm -hmm. And hand in hand with the university and, and what we do with TAF, uh, we'll make those decisions and we'll be prudent and, and thinking about what and how we do. Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird in a perverse way, Jordy, you know me well, is that I, I kind of relish in change and I do like it. I'm one of the few people that, that embraces it and we're very lucky at LSU to have it uh, uh, to be where we are and to be able to do that I mean I can't say that for everyone in the business because it is uh, unsettling uh, in, in a lot of ways but for us you know change is a good thing and I think um, I think we're going to be the beneficiary of it and it's not gonna it's not gonna stop it's just gonna keep on going yeah. and I'd be lying to you if I told you I had a crystal ball and can tell you what was going on and what's going to happen but you know it's it's we're going to be here and we're going to embrace it and we're going to uh, take uh, advantage of it uh, the best we can All right, live golfer Dustin Johnson in the lead at the Open right now, St. Andrews. Johnson is uh, minus nine, while uh, American, uh, who's this guy? Corey? Is it Corey Johnson? Who's no, leading the it, it is. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, Cameron, Cam, Young. Cam Cameron Young. Young. Cameron Young. Cameron Young. Because I get him confused with the Australian Cam Smith. But Cam Young is um, 
I think this is his third time to be finishing within the top three of a major this year. So he's been sniffing around contention. But I think the bigger story is that they have a live golfer that the PGA has wanted nothing to do with, didn't want to show any of them, haven't really wanted to cover them. And then they're able, then they have to, I mean, they have to show Dustin Johnson. They did their outro of him walking off the green on 18 because he's in the lead. They had to do an interview with him. Like, this is playing. I mean, I'm it's sure Dustin Johnson is going in and laughing. Like, oh, yeah. he's like, oh, boys, I got him right where I want him. Like, yeah, Paulina, this is excellent. Like, this is such a DJ move for him to be like, he just seems like that kind of guy to be like, kind of like, I want to play, I want to win this time because nobody wants me to win. Yeah. Like, they don't want to talk about me at all. I was like, I'll give him something to talk about. No doubt. And then he'll just disappear again and go back on that. Do you see that private jet they had? They had a double decker private jet on the way back to from a live golf tournament. All the caddies, oh, yeah. all the wives, all yeah. the players, <laughs> full bar. And it's like, who kind of wouldn't want to do this? Right. Like, this is like, did we made the right call? They're making you, they're, really they're make definitely you think, yeah. feel guilty about it's like a great, staying aboard. Yeah, it's like a retirement tour, but DJ is kind of one of the one of the few that still has a little bit left in the tank that could pull off a an open win. I'm and pulling for you, at man. At the home of golf on the I'm 115th no anniversary. Doubt about it. It's the worst. <laughs> it's it is a, a nightmare. Uh, Bato1122 tweeted in asking if the, uh, the segment with Shay Dixon, uh, will be posted to Apple podcast, uh, and it will, uh, we will have that up on all of our podcast formats for you. Uh, that was really cool on Wednesday and that will be every Wednesday for you right here, uh, on the Jordy Collada show, as you can find that, uh, from, uh. Uh, from from 10 to 11 o'clock uh, each uh, Wednesday uh, over on the show if you want to check that out. Talk and recruiting specifically with Shea uh, just about what's going on around LSU, around the state, with the staff. Uh, Shea still has the best relationships, still has uh, great information uh, right now. In between some stuff, obviously he'll have a big announcement coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, but uh, right now uh, just keeping it independent. And uh, every Wednesday he's going to be with us. So uh, really looking forward uh, to uh, to to having him around. Uh, another tweeter asks, does the uh, the numbers seven and eighteen give those players an advantage in the NIL space, uh, yeah. and should that be considered? Um, look, I, I think that NIL stuff is going to be creative in a lot of ways, uh, and would uh, believe that uh, around LSU's tradition of number seven and number eighteen, that that could absolutely you know open the door. Uh, for some possibilities of, 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 you know, maybe NIL discussions or at least opening it. You know, we were talking to Seven Banks a couple of weeks ago, um, and, you know, Seven was talking about, um, you know, wearing the number seven, but he was also talking about uh, NIL opportunities uh, in this part of the world where he doesn't have a lot of relationships, right? Like he doesn't have uh, a lot of people that he knows. He's not from the area. He just got here a little late. Uh, you know, he looks around and he sees a lot of the guys have NIL stuff that are either in the works or people are talking to him about it. Um, and, you know, he just didn't have that chance. Maybe that's a conversation starter for a guy like Seven Banks in the future where, you know, people aren't from here and you get you get a number or you get something that's a tradition for LSU and that can open up, uh, you know, some negotiating lines or at least some relationships uh, that you could possibly build uh, with – uh, you know, with, with, with potential student athletes through the business world. So, yeah, I mean, possibly. And, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, everything is on the table when it comes to NIL, right? And I think a, a lot of people um, are taking I think the Don uh, just walked ankles. in. Uh, speaking of the Godfather, the Don, kiss the ring. Uncle Frankie. Uh, the legend uh, has walked into the studio. We will talk to him about what it's, being, what it's like being back uh, in Baton Rouge. Uh, what it's like being here in the current role that he is now with LSU. Look, we've seen Frank Wilson lead LSU out of the tunnel. You know, I mean, we've seen him with major responsibilities for LSU football. We've seen him get guys uh, like Leonard Fournette. We've seen him get guys like Daryl Williams. We've seen him, you know, close on guys like Foster Moreau and Russell Gage late in the process to make sure the entire class was secure. He's got great recruiting stories. You've heard the respect that the staff has for Wilson uh, recruiting and coaching next to his side. Uh, now here at LSU. Now we'll get his point of view when we come back here next on the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet.
We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyra Lacey, Greg Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. Uh, best athlete to come out of New Iberia, Mark Roman? Kayshawn Buddha. Kayshawn? Wow. Wow. Right now, Kayshawn's, you know, and I, Mark was a little bit before me. I was a ball boy uh, when, when Mark was playing at New Iberia Senior High School. Uh, I, play, I played, like, right after Mark. Um, but Kayshawn just has just done some things, and, you know, just the things that you guys are seeing Kayshawn do, that he's not even scratching the surface of what we saw on a day-to-day -day basis at practice. You know, and and, and it's, he's unreal. He's he, unreal. He's so natural. It's so na It's it's yeah. so easy. It looks so easy to him. Yes, it's so easy, and that there's never been another a, a competitor I've ever seen like Kayshawn. Kayshawn would not lose going eat pregame meal. <laughs> you know, he has to be the first. He is the ultimate competitor. You know, he would not lose. So trust me, he will be ready. Man, so um, kind of when I um, entered the transfer board, I knew you know um, where what type of uh, facility, what type of, you know, program I wanted to go to, you know, being that uh, before I came to Ohio State, my first unofficial was to LSU. Oh, wow. And, uh, but that was when Coach, you know, Coach O and uh, Corey Raymond was here or whatever. But um, definitely uh, to coaches, you know, the scheme Kelly, you know, trying to bring in, trying to implement, you know, his uh, way of going, like detailed, detailed person. You know, um, that's that's where I wanted to be. I know I wanted to be. Did you have any experience with Coach Kelly? No, I never had no experience. No. Really? Mm. Uh, who was your main recruiter from LSU? Uh, Sherman Sherman Wilson. Mm. Yeah, he he was. You know, stay consistent. You know, honest. You know, you know, just you know, gave it to me straight. Yeah. You know, and this is where I wanted to be. Uh, how do you how do you feel about that number at this university playing that position? Yeah, man, I, I definitely want it. You know, I definitely. If you want to come in and prove, you know, to my teammates, not just the coaches, but to my teammates that I got to go play with, you know, that, you know, I deserve it. And, and once I do that, you know, then you know, everything is, you know, up from there. Yeah. We're all from different places. In Here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. Uh, as uh, all of you have been commenting and uh, joining us over the last couple of weeks and months, uh, it has been cool to get to know uh, this new staff uh, that Brian Kelly has brought in. We've had a chance to talk to a lot of the assistant coaches, a lot of the coordinators, a lot of the people that have come through, including some of the, the new faces and football players uh, that have come through here in uh, what was a, a very intense uh, roster rebuilding process. Uh, for LSU, somebody that we are very familiar with, uh, somebody that is very familiar uh, with LSU, with the state of Louisiana, uh, and comes back to the university uh, with so much respect, yet uh, so much more experience uh, at a different level. When he left, he was the best recruiter and one of the best running back coaches in America. Now he comes back to LSU with head coaching experience and much more success stories uh, along the way. He's back as the associate head coach, at LSU, uh, back in a familiar role, coaching the running backs, uh, and now joining us uh, on the set here of the Jordy Collada Show. And it is great to see our friend, uh, Coach Frank Wilson here. Coach, good morning, how are you? Good morning, thanks for having me, glad to be here. Absolutely, man. Um, how'd you get back? Um, you know what, uh, seven years flew by. I did. Right, it did. flew by, and so, and my last stop was very fortunate to to get an opportunity to go to Lake Charles, um, but had to uh, deal with some very challenging circumstances there, uh, as we were there and um, all that the world dealt with pandemic mm -hmm. and we dealt with Laura and Delta and those things and uh, there was a change. There was a change at LSU, um, and Coach Kelly reached out uh, to me. I got a chance to visit with him. Uh, and it was a great uh, meeting uh, for several hours, he and I. Uh, and I just felt that he was uh, a head coach 
that had experience, that had leadership skills, um, and that one of a handful of people that I thought uh, that I can learn from, that I can continue to grow from uh, professionally. And so um, I jumped at the opportunity to yeah. come back home. Yeah. Um, how has the job, the league changed since you left and come back to it now? Yeah. Um, the league, uh, college football has changed. The landscape of transfer report or the landscape of NIL has changed. Uh, but it's like anything, you adapt or you die. Mm -hmm. right? And so we've adapted to it. Um, I like us. I, I like where we're at right now. I like the, um, where we're trending. Uh, I think we're ascending. I think our program uh, is under the right leadership. Uh, with the right type of uh, staff and support staff, uh, with the right AD, with the right president to take mm -hmm. LSU uh, back to its rightful place, yeah. to the top. You've seen a lot of good things in recruiting. You've seen a lot of stories and streaks and things that uh, have really uh, paid off for the school that you've been at. What have you? Um, what is your point of view of, of the success that you guys have been riding over the last week and a half, the last two weeks? You know, I think it's, it's, it starts with 2022, you, you look at uh, us getting here in, in January and trying to assemble uh, a staff uh, or a, a, a recruiting class um, and uh, really taking a look at the portal. And, and I believe we picked up 14, 15 guys out of that portal. Mm -hmm. uh, and seven, seven or eight of those guys are, are guys that are from Louisiana. Uh, you look at the high school portion of the other 10 we took. Uh, those guys were Louisiana, uh, and uh, you throw in Harold Perkins with that. Who is Louisiana? Although sure. he played his high school, um, uh, high school football in Texas, um, and that's that's LSU. That's that's ten high school guys. That's seven transfer guys. That's seventeen out of the twenty-five uh, to start building it the way that Coach Kelly uh, saw it, uh, the way that well, we see it. Um, and it's allowed us to uh, go into a 23 campaign uh, that's starting to hit stride, that both near and abroad, uh, we're getting guys that, that fit LSU, that fit us. Yeah. Can you take me back to when you were just announced onto the job and the challenge it was in um, just getting this roster to a competitive place like you guys opened up spring football with? Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the December – period had already gone beyond. We were heading into the February signing period. Um, and it was, um, well, we were right at the December before we got to the February signing period. Um, somewhere around the state championship, because I remember we were a week away from <laughs> right, the, the, the signing day. And there were some in-state guys we tried to make inroads with, uh, which was challenging. It was challenging for a new staff. We had just gotten here. We were trying to make our, our presence felt uh, before we went into a dead period, et cetera. Um, and so we, uh, we gave it our best and, uh, you know, thank God we had some guys in position um, that, that were already committed or recommitted when you talk about the Emory Jones, the Will Campbell, those guys. And then there was still work to do uh, for those guys we needed to get in February, the Harold Perkinses of the world. Um, but our, our, our emphasis turn then to the portal. Mm -hmm. How do we get good now in the midst of attrition and losing quality players? Uh, you replace them with veteran quality players. Right. Uh, and so we made a conscientious effort to go get those guys that we thought can come in and, and help us and be immediate impact players for us. And I thought we did a really good job in doing so and fulfilling our needs. Um, I think one thing that's lost in the greatness of your recruiting is the way that you recruit to the depth chart, the way that mm -hmm. you recruit to the roster. Uh, at, when, at, at the point when you get the roster back to where it's manageable and it's competitive to the way mm -hmm. you uh, and the staff and Coach Kelly and everybody approves of it, how much do you see the balance of – high school to portal recruiting each year? Yeah, um, you know, that's that's the part that has to be seen. You, you don't know uh, because um, roster management is everything. And so you recruit to the need, to the number, uh, based on the attrition that happens year in and year out. You can anticipate those guys that are seniors. 
you can anticipate those guys that may have a career ending uh, injury. Mm -hmm. But what you don't account for is the young guy who decides to go back home or to go to another place, you weren't prepared for it. And mm -hmm. so I think as you look at the NC2A and legislations being brought about that now puts timetables so that you can recruit to your roster um, opposed to being shocked and then you know signing a class then losing people mm -hmm. um so you know there's some legislation that's that's favorable that's going to help us manage that better um but you know we we, we want to do well uh with our high school coaches we, we want to start in the state of louisiana and then go uh from inside out the way we've always done it and i think um and that's exactly what coach kelly wants to do mm -hmm. and uh something that we all uh, are all on the same page with um, you come with this reputation of the godfather of the state of Louisiana. Uh, people recognize you to get to LSU and to get through New Orleans. You've got to go through Frank Wilson. How, how do you <laughs> manage that in the building where now it feels like it's much more of a national staff where there's so many relationships mm -hmm. so, so far stretched away from Louisiana um, and you're the guy that has, it feels like, uh, obviously the most knowledge of how the state operates and works from a high school football and recruiting standpoint? You know, I, I think BK's uh, outlook, his view is, is spot on. Um, he knows what he wants. He knows what we need. Uh, he said from the very beginning, uh, we're going to recruit, recruit Louisiana first. Uh, and that first week on the job, the fir first thing he did was go down to uh, the high school state coaching clinic in uh, downtown right before the state championship and, uh, and, and said that to our high school state coaches. Um, and so I, I do think that uh, that is real. Uh, as evident with the class of 2022. You're starting to see 2023 here. It, it's starting to, um, to go in that direction uh, mm -hmm. as we're starting to uh, galvanize and, and, and get some of these in-state players uh, on our roster, and I think there's still more to come uh, right now. Um, but, you know, it's we do we do have a, a wide range. We can cast our net probably further than we've ever done before mm -hmm. because we have so many coaches with great relationships throughout the entire United States. And so whether it's the East Coast, the West Coast, the North or South, we, 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 we can spread. And, uh, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing for LSU and its ability – uh, from a branding standpoint, to be a national brand, because we are mm -hmm. we're a worldwide brand. Uh, but I don't think that uh, we're going to lose sight um, of the great state of Louisiana and uh, doing a great job here as well. The night that LSU pulled out of the Texas Bowl on January 4th, there was high concern on what the running back room was going to look like this season. Um, it didn't take you long to turn that room into what feels like a pro-ready running back room. How do you feel about your guys after spring and what, what, what yeah. you were able to do? Um, I like our room. Uh, you know, we were able to, uh, to work with John Emery to, uh, to get him situated. He has worked extremely hard. He has done the work and the things necessarily to put himself in position uh, to be eligible, uh, to be ready to go this upcoming fall. Uh, and we're excited about uh, the things that he bring to the table Certainly, uh, we went out and got Noah Kane, yep. a guy that has Louisiana ties, is born and raised in Louisiana, although he went to high school at IMG. Uh, but a guy that, uh, that, that's our program type, prototype, in mm -hmm. a sense, of physicality, of downhill, of, uh, of moving the chains. Uh, we think he'll be good for us. Uh, I like the guys that are in our room. I like um, Armani. Uh, I like Trey Bradford. Um, uh, you know, those guys uh, really uh, add to us uh, and allow our, our room to be um, at its fullest. I didn't forget anybody, huh? John, Armani, Trey Bradford, Noah, uh, and Josh, and, and Josh Williams. So we, we're, we're excited about all of those guys. I think they all have skill set. They all have a talent uh, that they bring to the table. Um, and they all have their strengths. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll be able uh, in our room, like we've done for so long, to allow them to play to their strength where we complement 
each other and the team and get productivity out of all of them. The part early on that's recognizable about Kane, he came through here. Noah Kane came mm-hmm. and sat with us for about 25 minutes, is how much he respects the work that goes into being a good player, the, yeah. the nutrition part, the weight yeah. part, the, the academic part. He seems like he's very focused and motivated to, to help LSU immediately. Yeah, we, we have a room of, of mature young men. They, they all are. I'm, I'm extremely um, excited about our room. Um, you know, we, uh, it's a group of guys that in the, between the, the spring semester, summer session one, has really achieved in the classroom, has really achieved in the weight room and strength and conditioning, uh, and have taken the next step. Uh, we're in great position in, in all of the things that uh, we just mentioned uh, because of their work, their work mm-hmm. ethic and their understanding of the culture that Coach Kelly has put in place of accountability in everything that they do. Yeah. And that's allowed us to uh, really put our, uh, our best foot forward. So uh, we only hope that the room will be a, uh, an attribute mm-hmm. uh, to, our, to our team. Yeah. Um, John Emery obviously was one of the highest rated running backs to come through here since mm-hmm. Leonard and that crew in, in, in that cycle. He was committed to George Ellis. She mm-hmm. was able to get him. You have a, a really good relationship with the, I mean, you want some Godfather stuff. I believe John Emery Sr. was on O.P. Walker's staff when yeah. Frank was the head coach back in yeah. uh, the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, kissed the ring <laughs> yes. legitimately. Yeah. Um, but he seems, like you said, very motivated yeah. uh, and very focused in on what seems to be his money year. Yeah, so um, both mom and dad, we, we go all the way back, high school, college days, and uh, known John, um, Mark, uh, Diamond, the, the entire family since, since birth. Uh, and even even when I was in San Antonio, he was coming out of high school, would have conversations with him then about why LSU was the best place for him uh, when he was committed to Georgia. Uh, so it's good to finally be able uh, to coach him and to know him as a young man because I had not seen him since he was a toddler. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, he's been uh, phenomenal. He's been um uh, endearing and, 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 and just really a thirst for knowledge of wanting to get better as the entire room has been. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so John Emery Senior was my D-line coach for me. Yeah, he did a great <laughs> job for us. Yeah. It's crazy, man. What, what's it like going back to these high schools? I, I, I mean, yeah. I've told stories about I've been in New Orleans with you. Yeah. I mean, you don't pay for a meal, you don't wait for a seat. You know, there's nothing that, yeah. what's it like going back in this, in this role uh, with humbling. now this experience? Yeah, yeah. humbling. Yeah. Um, because you, you go about your business of serving a state, of serving a city, of serving a university. And then when you, you go back at times to be received well, mm-hmm. um, just human nature, it feels good, you know, to people, for people to recognize, we know what you've done uh, for the state. We know what you've done for LSU. Uh, we appreciate you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's it in its most genuine fashion. And that's Louisiana. Yeah. We're, we're a people culture, a people society where uh, we rely on those relationships and, and, and we share those things with one another. And so, uh, you know, at a lot of those schools, uh, it's guys that I coach that are now the coaches there. Right. And so, you know, in those conversations <laughs> yeah. with Nick Foster uh, and those at, at, at St. Aug and, and Jerry Phillips, uh, Noel Ellis, as it was for Keenan Lewis, and you know all of those guys I've I've known you know since they were teenagers and uh, things of that nature, and so and then there, there's still some guys out there who uh, was on my staff or I coached against, so you know the Willie Brooks, the Emmanuel Powells, the you know they're still around as as well as the legends like the Hank Tierney's of the world. Yeah. So it's um, it's great it's great to be able to to, to go all the way to uh, South Louisiana, then go up and see Ryan Antoine at, at, at Westgate and uh, all the way up to North Louisiana and, and, and go just uh, spend some time with, with Brad Shaw, who's now the AD up mm-hmm. at Bastrop. And, um, so it's, it's, it feels home. Yeah. Like, I guess that's the base, best way to put it. Yeah. Uh, it feels home because you've spent so many years uh, with these coaches in some capacity uh, and I'm just one of them. Yeah. And I tell them that I'm, I'm cut from the same cloth. I'm one of you. That th- Those are my kin. 
you know, if you will. Sure. Yeah. It was good to have you back, bro. Yeah, it's good to be <laughs> I back. know that. Yeah. I know that. Uh, you will be remember. Uh, you know, when it when it when it all goes down, you'll be remembered for the Leonard Fournettes, Devin Whites, Lyle Collins, Jeremy <laughs> Hills, Jarvis Landry's, Odell Beckham's, the five stars that you were able to you know, put your sights on, go get, and and not let them out of the state. Yeah. I think it, it's more important the guys that you close like Foster Morrow and Russell Gage and Deion Jones and the, uh, Duke Riley and uh, Andre, Andre Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> Obviously, uh, how do you go into yeah. looking at this? How do you evaluate those guys? Because sometimes the 25th scholarship yeah. is most important yeah. is, is as important as the first one that you handed out. Yeah, so I, I uh, Duke made it back to Miami on yesterday and uh, – so we we're having a phone conversation, um, and uh, his mom had told him that he, she ran into me. We were over at another broken egg, mm -hmm. and uh, Coach Kelly and I, and I was able to introduce her to Coach. And um, we talked about that. And, um, you know, he was, he, he was one of those late yeah, guys. Yeah, he was the 25th right? guy, right? Yeah, and so in his class, uh, we're sitting in a home, and I have this paperwork that wasn't really – worth the paper it was written on but says that when a scholarship becomes available we'll give it to you uh, but we're offering you uh, a blue shirt for you to come and then we'll sign you in January or whatever right and so I'm reading it out to him and you can just see the hurt in his face uh, in his parents face and so after I finished reading it I tear it up right in front of him. <laughs> I said, and uh, this is no more because you, Duke Riley, have a full scholarship to LSU and the family wow, erupts, dude, right? I got goosebumps, man. <laughs> Shit. The family erupts and we're crying and laughing and, and all of those things. But it's so much to those things. And, you know, he bought up because at the time, Pivoto was at Kentucky. Wow. Right? And Pivoto was recruiting him at Kentucky and he was considering Ole Miss. And he calls, I call in. And he tells me he's not coming to LSU on a visit because we don't have a scholarship for him just yet. And I go into my, my spill of, I said, who's with you? And he said, my entire family. I said, put me on speaker. Right? So they put me on speaker phone, right? And I, I go in. I go to do yeah, yeah. what I you do. Turn right? into Frank Wilson. Right? <laughs> right? And we and so it's, it's, it's a great meeting. We hang up. And three minutes later, my phone rings, and Pivotal called me. He goes, listen, I'm Bradley Dell. I know you don't know me, but I was doing my home visit, and they put you on speaker phone. <laughs> and that was the most badass shit I've ever heard. And we're going to work together. And I told that kid, you go to LSU. <laughs> So here's the guy who's the linebacker coach, co coordinator at Kentucky, telling Duke Riley, Yo, no, yeah. You're going and I'm coming too. Yeah. And lo and behold, a year later, he, he came. That is right? so good. So that's one of the, 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 the great stories uh, of me intervening in the midst of Bradley Dell doing his in home visit and they put me on speaker to try to convince Duke to come. That is yeah. so good. When did you know you had Leonard? Did you know when he puts the hat on at the Under Armour game? Yeah. How far in advance did you know that you had him? Yeah, here's what I tell people. Anytime uh, an athlete tells you, uh, I don't know yet, mm. when we announce, Jesus. I'll tell you. Oh, my God. Or we're going into prayer mm. and we're going to be silent for some time. Mm. It's You're not the guy. You're mm. not the school. They're right. not coming. Uh -huh. The school, I have never in all of my years – Number one player in the country, five star here, five star there. Had a guy, and not know he was coming. Right. They tell you. They, right. they, they right. they're gonna tell the school they're going to. They're going to tell. Right. And so um, we knew, I knew, um, for sure, days before, maybe a week before the actual announcement. Uh, but the suspense, you you give them their moment. You don't take that. Sure. From them. But like you were like secure, like we got him. Yeah. 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 Um, what was that like? Because <clears throat> how long did you recruit Leonard? Three years. And it was, I mean, yeah. you offered him as a freshman. We offered him as a freshman. Uh, I was at McDonald 35 football game. St. Aug was playing 35. He's a freshman, and he rushes for 200-something yards, right? Mm -hmm. 
And I see his dad going to the concession stand, so I sneaked out, right? <laughs> <laughs> and accidentally on purpose bumped yeah. into him, right? And, uh, Oops, sorry. While yeah, we're yeah. using the restroom or whatever, right? Hey, yeah, I'm in one portal, he's in the other. I'm like, hey, your son's not bad. <laughs> 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 and we're in different portals, right? And uh, I say to him, I said, listen, we're going to offer him a scholarship. And I said, and I want you to know, here's what's going to happen next. He'll become mm -hmm. the number one player in America by the time he's a senior. And he's like, right, get out of here with that. And I was like, nah, he will. But I want you to remember this moment <laughs> right. in the stall, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, but that was, uh, that was the night we offered him, St. Aug versus McDonald 35 at Tad Gormley Stadium, the first week in September. How <clears throat> proud of you or how proud of him are you now to invite him back and speak yeah. to your running back room? Yeah. Uh, forget that he's got a Super Bowl ring on, all that yeah. to, to get to that point. You know, so last week I, uh, I was out. I wasn't in the office. He calls me. He said, I have my son, um, and I want to walk him through the building and this. And I said, I'm not there, but hold on. Give me a moment. So I make a call and let the guys know he's coming, and I want you to bring uh, – you know, when he comes in, I want you to bring him in the team room and uh, the Leonard Fournette video. I want his, his, his son to see that. Mm -hmm. I want his daughter to see that. And you watch, you know, introduce it as I would, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and give him his flowers, give him his moments. And it meant the world to him. And um, so they were able to do that for him. And uh, he called when they were in the indoor and he's like FaceTiming me and he's telling his son, this is where daddy practiced at. And those things are so precious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like when yeah. when Tyron came and he's speaking to the team and I got a, a, a teardrop on my, my eyelid because the command he takes of the room Oof. and the maturity and the man that he's become, that he, he's a public speaker now. This is a guy who, yeah. who didn't talk now. Right. So contrary to popular belief, Tyron Matthews wasn't loud and brash, and he was, he was real secluded. He didn't say a whole bunch, and all right, and mm -hmm. you know, but he was mild mannered. Kept his head down a little yeah, bit. He didn't, yeah, he didn't talk a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. And to see his public speaking development skills to be what they are now, to watch him last week in New Orleans at the Saints facility um, galvanize the community. When those young men do those things, to watch Devin yesterday up in Shreveport take 30 kids in the police department to uh, Dick's Sporting Goods or Academy, wherever it was, and back to school stuff for their season, all of those things swell your heart. Yeah, It is because it's, it's the men that they become, the husbands, the fathers, the responsible citizens that they are. Tyron Matthew came here. Uh, and sat down for 45 minutes we just I said Frank Wilson and he opened up for like yeah 45 seconds a minute 15 of just gushing yeah. on y'all's relationship but he told the story about Knoxville tell yeah. tell us the story from your point of view because <laughs> that's a great story. So, Inky Johnson told the story on social media too I didn't know that he was yeah, in the room yeah that he day. was yeah, yeah. Um, I never heard him say it. So Ink was one of our GAs. Right. And he told him. <laughs> and he says, he said, and Frank Wilson is pounding the desk. Yeah. And so, so, I mean, Coach Owen almost, and I almost got in fisticuffs behind right. this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm the receiver coach there. Mm -hmm. This is your first year? At Tennessee. Right. Yeah. 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 And so Tyron's an underclassman. Um, so we have two van loads that comes to Knoxville, <laughs> right? So it's Anthony Johnson. It's Lyle Collins. It's... Uh, Munchy Lego, mm -hmm. uh, it's Trey Turner, uh, the it's, family, yeah, it's the, fam <laughs> it's the fam. It's, it's, Jarvis, it's Jarvis, yeah. Um, what's the boy name? Uh, Trevon uh, Reed. Uh, Trevon Reed, yeah, from uh, from um, uh, went to Auburn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trevon Reed. All of these guys are up there, right? So anyway, Nick Montana's the quarterback there wow. like, at the camp, um, and it's who's who, <clears throat> and there's this. This guy that's just locking everybody up, right? I mean, has brush burns from the turf all over his body, black pebbles in his mouth, and he just, <laughs> he refuses to go away, right? right. And, and, of course, I knew who Tyron was, and um, he just play after play after play. Like, but did you know who Tyron was? Like, yeah. do you expect him to come up there and dominate like that? Um, I thought he could. I, had, uh -huh. I knew him since he played – 
Park Ball, New right. York, from yeah. New Orleans Recreation Department. And there were always stories of, of Cornbread's little boy. They made, and, and I remember the first time I seen him playing baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was phenomenal then, mm -hmm. but was never big in stature. And so, right. all right, we'll see. So the Wayne Cordova years at St. Aug, right after Katrina, uh, he was a really good player for him, but he was limited. They didn't do a whole bunch with him. They get a new coaching staff, and I, and it happens to be Dave Johnson. Uh, Dave was one of my receiver coaches at O'Perry Walker, who's now yeah. the head coach at St. Aug at that time. He had just left Millsaps. And I said, you have to do things with him and, and allow him to be who y'all telling me who he is. So he played Wildcat quarterback. He played running back, punt, punter, punt returner, kick returner. You know, he was a long jumper. He was a high jumper. Right. He, he, he did everything. <clears throat> and uh, he really, that's when you saw all that Tyron was. So anyway, so when they bought him up there, I, I thought he would be, but it was my first time seeing him against the best sure. receivers in the country. Um, and so he, uh, he and Jarvis Landry lit it up. It got to a point where they were just going against each other yeah, every time. Yeah, right? yeah. Because I mean. Jarvis, so Jarvis is a talker. Right. Tyron's not. Jarvis calling everybody out. I want you. I want you. I want you. <laughs> and he's beating everybody. And Tyron just quietly walks up, and they tangle up, and you know all this good stuff. And it was it was great competition. Sure. Uh, and and of course Jarvis was younger. Mm -hmm. But Jarvis also was the same kid who played in the state championship as a freshman and as a sophomore. Yeah. Was MVP, Making you know? plays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> and so, anyway, we go in meetings, and I'm like, it, it's, it's, we got to take him. And, and it's, it's a no-brainer. And Monty Kiffin was like, I like him. Bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's so small, but, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, every receiver we've offered, he just locked up. What are we talking about? Right. Like, what, what are y'all yeah. talking about? Yeah, what's man? the debate? And so, uh, Coach O tells me, he's like, he ain't a prototype. <laughs> and I was like, well, he's a program type. I tell you that. If, if we're playing with those receivers and they can't beat him, we should take him. And so we go back and forth of healthy discussion. F you, no F you. We go back and forth of healthy discussion, and uh, it was great. Yeah. Um, and uh, a couple of weeks later, a month later, so I leave to come, to come here and mm -hmm. continue the deal with Tyron and the rest is history. What about that August morning that, that – the, meet, the meeting and him being thrown off the team. What was that day like mm. for you? Because, mm. I mean, I can remember driving. Yeah. It was raining. It was storming. Yeah. It was dark. It was. Yeah. So um, our sports medicine department and I were in conversation. I went up to see Les, and he told me what he felt we had to do at that point. Uh, I asked him, had he talked to Tyron? He said, I'm about to talk with him now. So I gave them their, their time. Uh, after they visit, I went over to WCA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sitting outside on a milk crate mm. Mm. Uh, outside of WCA. Uh, and it may have been Corey may have came with me over there. Uh, Corey had just gotten here, uh, Raymond. And, uh, and I remember asking him some, some, some personal questions and him answering him and then laying his head on my shoulder mm. crying about Shit. what had happened and it was absolutely devastating mm. it was devastating and uh but immediately started thinking okay so where do we go next and the, the whole college world wanted he gonna transfer here he should go here and was like mm. let's let's just slow down something and talk to she sheila and tyrone his guardians his uncle and aunt who raised him uh, about what we would do next. They came in town and um, just started thinking of the next things we needed to do. And, uh, of course, ultimately he wound up um, going to Houston with, uh, with Coach to, um, to therapy mm -hmm. before he got himself situated. But it was a very, very tough, mm -hmm. tough situation, a tough thing to go through uh, with him. Um, but, uh, but look at God sure. and, and what it did for him. And uh, that gives him a platform, a testimony uh, to be able to share his story, to mm 
to serve as inspiration for so many. Absolutely. Absolutely. An incredible story to see uh, where it started to where it is. <laughs> Uh, now, LSU running backs coach Frank Wilson, did you take away from spring what you were looking to accomplish going into it just on the field? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think we fostered competition. I thought we got better. Um, you know, we, we have a saying, uh, our depth chart is etched in sand, and it's real. Um, and we, we want to get it to a point that when uh, we're in a game situation and, and Coach Denbrock, Coach Kelly says, uh, who do you want in? Uh, we can say it don't matter. They all bite. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they all yeah. bite. And, and, and we, we coach them the same. We train them the same. Uh, in a sense, they're all unique, and there's different approaches with each individual. Um, but they're all trained to be able to be the starter. Mm -hmm. You have to coach them that way because uh, at our position group like that, it mm -hmm. can change. And, uh, and I think we have. Uh, I think we have four or five guys that can start for us right now. Uh, and that's what we wanted coming out of spring ball. Yeah, Denbrock sat right there and talked about the quarterback competition and yeah. says it's probably the best in the country. Or yeah. it says it's competitive. No, it is. What you is. would you make of that, that group through spring? Our quarterback group? Yes. I like them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just um, you look at uh, anytime you have a room where there's harmony but yet – Fierce competition, it's a good room. Mm -hmm. um, because a guy who has an unwavering belief in himself will confidently go about doing his business in spite of the guy next to him. Mm -hmm. So he's really not in competition with him or him. He's with himself. Mm -hmm. And that um, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. That's what you want. When guys are insecure or unsure of themselves, they start looking at the guy next to them. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't have the right guy. The great ones never worry about that. Yeah, The great ones, they don't. They, they, they go about doing their business. They encourage competition and they thrive off of it. Yeah. And so, uh, and that's what we want in the backfield room and throughout our team as well as in our quarterback room. How do you feel about the group you're taking into the SEC compared to where it was on January when you took the job to what you guys were able to build going yeah. into the season? So, um, so we were, you know, John didn't play. Trey Bradford wasn't playing. Uh, Noah wasn't here. Armani was hurt. <laughs> yeah, right. So we uh, – we had Josh and uh, a young man that's no longer with us. That was that was the backfield mm -hmm. at that time, and so it was pretty much depleted. And so to to build it back up um, from an academic standpoint, from a mentality standpoint, from a culture standpoint, from a skill, um, from a skill level, to to not just what do you do, but this is how you do it. This is why you do it, and this is what they're looking at on the other side because this is the defensive fit. And so if you take this course and you do this with your shoulders, with your feet, it will do this for them. And that as the runner, this needs to happen at the heels of the offensive lineman because anything premature of that, they won't be able to work to the second level, mm -hmm. and that backer will rock back and be able to make a play on you without interference. And so really training them to be young pros and it's not just get the ball and go that way. Um, and whether it's in the run game or the pass game to, to get a pre-snap read, to see the shell of a defense and, and what, based on that look, what's anticipated. And because that's anticipated, I need to slow down because something's coming or I need to get out instead of just patting my feet in the backfield mm -hmm. and give my quarterback somewhere to go with the ball. Yeah. And so I think we're better students of the game now than we were in January, and we'll be even that much better come, come September. A tradition that started in your first year at LSU when you started was number seven with Pat Pete, yeah. you went to Tyron and on down the line. We've seen Leonard wear it, and now we see Kayshawn so, Booty yeah. wearing it. What have you, yeah. What's your relationship like with the team superstar and now yeah. wearing number seven? So he was, uh, he was my first guy when I got here. You know, he was unsure. 
Mm. You know, if he was going <laughs> to. <laughs> Frank, go to, Frank <laughs> welcome. Go to work. <laughs> Grab that leather jacket Jackie that you pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I had. I know. <laughs> Without unboxing, it was, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. Now go to work. <laughs> so he, um, no, he's, he's, we have a great relationship. Yeah. He's been phenomenal. Um, he is deserving of number seven. He embodies it. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, for the young man, I think he's extremely talented. I think he's driven, um, and I think he'll uh, he'll wear it well mm -hmm. in, in honor of all those that came before him. Um, do you want to be a head coach again? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm good right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's not something uh, that's pressing for me uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be uh, a good assistant coach for yeah. Brian Kelly. I want to be a good assistant coach for my peers and colleagues. And uh, I want to do uh, my part in, in helping our staff, our university, um, be the best that we can be. You understand this because you sat in the chair. It's got to be challenging to bring a group together as yeah. fast as BK did. Yeah. And then, really, from just the point of view that I've had of watching you guys walk through here and talk, you yeah. all all seem to really kind of get along and like one yeah. another, which I'm, I'd imagine yeah. is a big deal. They're pros. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if nothing else, he's assembled uh, a bunch of pros. And so we have a staff of men that are like they were former players. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, they exude confidence in their profession. Uh, and everybody respectfully is the head coach of their room, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an expert in offensive line play and wide receiver play and quarterback play and defensive back player and linebacker play and D-line play. And so we're able to move in harmony um, because there's no egos, because everyone is confident in what they're doing that complements what the other guy is doing. And so I think we have an outstanding staff, and uh, I'm honored to be a part of it. Absolutely. Uh, what do you make of the league? Yeah, yeah, it hadn't changed. It's just fierce <laughs> as ever. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think the, the SEC West, um, people may not like it, but I, I think it stands alone. Mm -hmm. I think it stands atop. Uh, of, uh, and there's good coaches all over yeah. uh, in conferences throughout America and at, at every level. But I think the SEC West is second to none. Right. Um, this recruiting cycle was very different in Louisiana, <clears throat> right? When you look at the, the quarterback heavy, not as many defensive line. Yeah. How, how do you, We're how, talking 22 or 23? 23, okay. where you are now. How, are, how, do you, how far down the line are you evaluating classes? Uh, 20, uh, we, we have guys on the board as far as 26. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so that's what, like, the camps last month are so instrumental yeah, for what you're doing. Yeah, and so we uh, – we have a couple of 25, 20, several 25 guys, a handful of 26 guys, um, and then have fully identified 24 guys. Uh, but there's still a lot to be done in, in 23 here. Uh, there's been a mad rush here in July. Uh, we anticipate it'll go through the start of the season and then pick back up. And so, um, as you know so well, uh, there's recruiting and then there's the fight. Mm -hmm. And so we, mm -hmm. we have these verbals. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to get them to the finish line. You got to get them signed on that dotted line. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's the part uh, where you, you earn your way. And so even, uh, even in last year's cycle when Harold Perkins verbally on television committed to uh, A&M, it was, all right, here we go now. Mm -hmm. Buckle up. Go. Yeah. And uh, – and it went all the way. It went all the way down. And like even in that case, we you know we knew uh, days a couple of days before that yeah. we were going to get him. Even though the whole world was all right, what's going to happen? Because you always tell it. So if you're the school that's sitting there, all right, I hope he chooses uh, us. You're out. You're out. Yeah. Yeah. Now could it change? Yeah. But generally, um, I, I haven't. And. I recruited a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about you, it. You Done this to Topper too. <laughs> right. Yeah, you usually know. Uh, what gets lost, though, in all of that, and mm -hmm. I, I appreciated Sherman Wilson for pointing it out, is your on-the-field development. Yeah. Because, look, man, Alfred <clears throat> Blue doesn't end up in the NFL with 300 yards rushing on accident. Yeah. You know, I mean, some people are coming down here and saying, wow, he's, he can play. He's just yeah. been behind a stable of pros. Yeah. So what, what happens 
for us, uh, we try to develop the room uh, that we maximize uh, them intellectually um, um, and athletically. They possess the skill set with a lot of rubber steel on their tires. Mm -hmm. They're not worn. Yeah. And so the the list sure from Spencer Ware from Richard Murphy down yeah. they've all at least had a cup of tea if not a, a long career um, you know from from Richard to Stephen to Spencer Ware to Alfred Blue uh, to Michael Ford um, I guess next would have been Jeremy Hill Jer Stephen Ridley yeah Jeremy Hill uh, Alfred Blue Terrence McGee, Kenny Hilliard, wow. Leonard, <laughs> Daryl, uh, Darius, Clyde. So all of them we recruited or coached have had a chance to play in the National Football League. Wow. Coach Frank Wilson, yeah. back in Baton Rouge, man. It feels good. looks good to see you wearing the colors. Can't wait to see you on a Saturday. Some of these boys don't know what it's like on Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it, it's different. You know, I, I remember listening to this documentary and it's Marcus Spears speaking. Hmm. And he said, when you, when you go into Tiger Stadium, you better be sure of who you are. Hmm. Because if not, uh, it's going to be a long night for yeah. you. Yeah, you, you, you'll be trained, you'll be prepared. You get exposed. When you, yeah, when you, when you go into Tiger Stadium, it's, uh, there's nothing like yeah. it. And there's not many arenas uh, stadiums I haven't coached in. There's none like Dead Valley. There's nothing like it nowhere in America. Yeah, it's a special place. Uh, when Tebow looks into the SEC network cameras and they ask him what's the fiercest place you've ever played, he's just mm -hmm. he's different at yeah. LSU. You know yeah, what I mean? It is. When you got Jamal Adams jumping around telling him to lock the gates and shit. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> it's a different yeah. night, man. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, I distinctly remember times with the ground shaking. For on sure. The side Absolutely. Line. The yeah. Sam Montgomery, the 2012 game. South Carolina? No, the 2012 Alabama LSU oh, game. Yeah, yeah. Where, you mm -hmm. know I mean, that, that the was. The one that went back and forth. Oh, yeah. the, the fourth quarter run from Copeland to the mm -hmm. student section, and everybody's out on the field yeah. and the band's playing. Yeah. It's still, I mean, There's no feeling like as it. electric as it, I've mean, ever seen it. Yeah, that was with Zach, right? Zach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. Odell and Jarvis yeah. were killing him. Yeah. Killing him. Yeah. Killing him. <laughs> um, um, Great to see you. Kiss the ring, man. The Godfather yeah, is yeah. here. It's Glad good to, to see be you here, back. Man. Humbled and honored to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Frank Wilson, uh, Louisiana's own, representing LSU. That is a very good thing for everybody who cares about LSU football. We're going to be back and eating compliments of Iversteins here on a Foodie Friday. Uh, Coach Frank Wilson, uh, great uh, time with him. We appreciate that. Make sure you hit the like button, share button, comment button. We'll be back with more presented by Go Chevrolet. But this opportunity was different. Um, and you have a chance to come to a place with unbelievable tradition, uh, work for the winningest head coach in college football. Um, just be at a state. I've never been at a state where yeah. football's king. I, you know, and it, it, if you just dominate your state, you're going to get some of the best players that there are. Sure. Um, I was I was excited to come to uh, a top level program. I've been at a lot of great places, um, been very fortunate in my career. But to really say that um, you have an opportunity every year, uh, once obviously once we get it rolling to win a national championship, um, there's not very many places that you can say that. So for him to offer me the opportunity to come with him to LSU um, was nothing but but you know humility and, and gratitude. Some Sunday players um, mm -hmm. in that room. But again, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be the total package, the total process um, of, of, of buy-in, of understanding what we're trying to get done, um, of figuring out how we want it to get done, but also allowing those guys to be able to play with instincts. Um, for example, I, I think Jay Ward is long yeah. and athletic. He's, he's very versatile. He's played corner, played nickel, played safety. Um, very excited about, you know, Joe Fouché, um, one of the transfer guys that we came in um, because he has a, a dimension of physicality. Um, Major Burns, 
you know, fortunate enough that he, he was able to come back home. You know, again, he's long, he's athletic. So he gives you flexibility between both field and boundary safeties. Um, and then you've got some guys that you can throw in, like uh, Brooks, um, mm -hmm. Sage, yeah. um, Derek Davis. Um, Todd Harris is a guy that's been around for a while. So I think that we have enough in that room to be successful. Um, but, again, you still want to continue to, to grow and be able to push each We're going to do it right. You know, the Tiger Athletic Foundation and, and, uh, and, and in partnership, obviously, hand in hand with what we do, uh, funded a, a master plan study because I wanted to see, hey, what, what we needed. And I, I just didn't want my opinion. I've been a sure. few places and I have a good one, I think. But you just want to see how and what our needs are. And so we're in that process of looking at it. And obviously, uh, the PMAC is, is uh, 50 years old this year and, uh, mm. and probably needs some updating. Uh, it's, it's got good bones, and maybe we can see what we can do with that. Uh, same thing with all that uh, you know, property that we have, both down Nicholson and where we are currently on Nicholson and North Stadium. I said, hey, is this the proper use and best use for that? Mm -hmm. And hand in hand with the university and, and what we do with TAF, uh, we'll make those decisions and we'll be prudent and, and thinking about what and how we do it. Sports with it. it. It's just like anything else. I mean, I, I, I don't want to get in, into hyperbole, but it's, you know, everything is. I mean, I, I, frankly, I'm still worried more about concussions. You know, we yeah. don't talk about it much anymore, but. You know, we've, we've kind of helped solve it in, in a lot of ways and make the game a lot safer. So anytime we have existential threats, which this one could or could not be, we just deal with it, and we mm -hmm. will deal with it. You know, it's just part of the game. And, you know, I don't mind a lot of what's come out of this uh, movement of doing more for the student-athletes, but like anything else, it boomerangs a little too far, and sure. you've got to swing it back into – Hey, what we do for the student athletes, and it's a hell of a lot, and and I'm proud of that fact that that we are leaders in doing that. But yeah, you know, it's kind of weird in a perverse way, Jordy. You know me well, is that I, I kind of relish in change, and I do like it. I'm one of the few people that that embraces it, and we're very lucky at LSU to have it, uh, to be where we are, and to be able to do that. I mean, I can't say that for everyone in the business because it is. Uh, unsettling uh, in, in a lot of ways but for us you know change is a good thing and I think um, I think we're gonna be the beneficiary of it and it's not gonna it's not gonna stop it's just gonna keep on going yeah. and I'd be lying to you if I told you I had a crystal ball can tell you what was going on and what's gonna happen but you know it's it's we're gonna be here and we're gonna embrace it and we're gonna uh, take uh, advantage of it uh, the best we can Point. Yeah, well, I, I think it starts here, you know, and we have a good bit of people on this particular staff who are from Louisiana uh, who know and believe in our hearts that this place produces the best football players in the country, you know, and I think the numbers speak for themselves per capita, produce the most NFL players, and you know what I mean? So even from an analytical standpoint, it makes sense to take the kids from here because the chances of them playing the league are higher than if they come from anywhere else. Yeah. Um, I think our brand is super powerful, so we will have to recruit at a national level or there's really no reason that we, we shouldn't, you know what I mean? Because if we can get a top player from another state who can help us win a championship, then of course, right? But um, I think it starts right here in Louisiana and then right here in Baton Rouge. You know, mm -hmm. there's some really good players who are still available that are right here in Baton Rouge. Yeah, well, I, I think it starts here. Yeah. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. Our friends over at Iversteins, Big Josh is back, the thespian, as uh, he is uh, serving us up some Cubans this morning. Wow, look at that. Look at the, look at the bread on look that thing. Look at that. Give that thing a little scrape in the microphone. Uh, the old bread scrape. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> Rub it on there. It tastes good forever. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that was great with Frank Wilson. We appreciate the coach coming through here. Uh, what an uncomfortable spot for Bradley Dale. Yeah. He got just, just straight like, <laughs> hey, man, put me on speakerphone. Uh, Big Josh, swing that in, bro. Yeah. Uh, everything good? You healthy? Everything's good? It's good to yeah, see you Yeah, man. Again. It's great to be back. Absolutely. I wish I didn't Absolutely. have to follow a godfather. Oh, yeah, yeah it's a tough, that. tough spot. That. Tough spot you, would, you and Bradley Del Pivoto both got it from Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be Brian Kelly, so I guess it could be. Yeah, yeah. Worse. Um, How are yeah, you, bro? You guys have had an awesome week. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm, All I these coaches, um, athletic directors rolling in. No big deal. Yeah. You know, Josh so. from Iverson's yeah. coming Josh in. Josh from Iverson. Josh from Iverson. <laughs> the Desmond. Yes, yeah. You're the biggest, you're the drama major. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am holding the camera. Right. Yeah. Where's your leather mask? <laughs> this is great. Let me, let me, you guys enjoy your sandwich. Let me yeah, give you yeah, a quick I need run. you, I need you to talk. I need you to go, Let me bro. give you this You told quick... me you were going to surprise us. How'd you come, how'd you get to a Cuban? Oh, I love this sandwich. We have pulled pork. Damn, it's good. You have ham. You have cheese. You have pickles. You have mustard. Mm. Mm. On a ciabatta. That's what I yeah, the ciabatta bread. You yeah. can't beat it. No. If you want a cabano, just add some pepperoni to that bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> mm. You can go Italian anytime. Right? <laughs> Let me give you my quick Scott Woodward story. No, oh, hit me. Who came into oh, the shop. I heard it. You heard it's it. Off the air. And, um, Which is great. It was. It was actually, you gave story. like the less embarrassing yeah, side of the. He probably loved it. So you think him. so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he comes in. Him. It's a Friday, Friday morning. Slow. We're, ge- we're gearing up for the holiday season. And a man comes in. We're talking. He's talking about how he loves our boudin. This is the best boudin in, in Baton Rouge. <laughs> Very nice. He introduces himself. Scott Woodward. Now, we have customers that do that a lot, regulars. And he's in every, like, Friday morning. I didn't think anything of it. Joshua, nice to meet you. <laughs> Just right over your head. So right over my head. <laughs> so we're having a conversation. He's going on about products. He's ordering his holiday turkey. Well, I normally get my holiday turkey from a farm out in Washington. So, bro, why are you ordering that shit from Washington? Yeah. <laughs> Not you, putting the pieces this. together. So then he's, yeah, then he's talking about boudin and hogs that cheese. So I said, you from here? <laughs> yeah, I was born and raised here, but I spent like the last 12 years kind of out in Washington. Oh, that's cool, man. Great area. I noticed he's wearing an LSU polo. So this is right after all the, you know, the firing. And this is where we're all just at the bit. Who's who we bringing in? Oh, it must be a football fan. Scott? I said, yeah. Scott? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, uh, he's over there hey, looking Scott. at, he's looking at our, he was looking at our frozen items. I said, uh, so who do you think we're going to bring in? <laughs> right to it. Right to him. He said, and this is when things aren't tipping yet for me. <laughs> well, you know, we've got some great candidates. Oh, and wow, I'm thinking wow. it's we. Wow. Like we LSU Nation, right? Yeah. yeah. Like this Go is Tigers. what we're talking about. Go yeah. Tigers. Yeah, this is right. <laughs> he thinks you know who you're <laughs> I, I got, Unbelievable. I've got no idea. And he goes, oh, we got some good. And I say, and I, and I would never do this at a, you know. If you'd have known. And excuse my language, but I said, uh, man, I hope we don't fuck it up. <laughs> I said, I just had this. They're gonna, we're going to fuck it up. We're going to bring in. We're going to bring in homeboy from Ole Miss or, 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 or Fatty from Ellis, you know, from a and M. And I'm like, he's like, well, I said, we need to go after that dude from Michigan State. He looks, he looks legit. He put my two yeah. <laughs> And this is all over, and he just smiles and nods and said, yeah, yeah, he's a really good coach. I said, well, okay. Don't you agree, Scott? Don't you agree? So it's still. Say something, Scott. We're having a conversation. It's still, it's still, it's still not. It's still not registering with me. I said, oh, man, okay. Well, maybe he's not a big fan like that. Maybe he's just, maybe he's like a a basketball or a baseball LSU fan. (laughs) I'm wrapping up his order, and I turn to him, and I remember it specifically. And I asked him on Friday. It was Alabama weekend. I said, "Uh, so you going to watch the game this weekend? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going. He goes, yeah. And so if you thought it couldn't get worse, it does. Because he goes, you going to watch? I said, probably the first quarter. What the fuck's going to matter after that? You know, <laughs> thinking that we're just going to get worked by Alabama. He's about you know? 50. <laughs> you know? He goes, yeah. He goes, oh, no. I said, oh, no. I'll grill something. I can't, I, like, I can't not watch my boys. I, you know, even a butt whooping's turned on in the background while I'm doing something around the house or whatever. So we finish up, and I just thought it was a great Friday. And he, he, he goes, thank you very much. And he goes and turns around, and I'm kind of like, okay. 
and he stops at the door. <laughs> can't believe he was, it. He opened the door and he stops and he turns around and he goes, I'm the athletic director over at LSU. <laughs> Bro, when I probably went white as a ghost, you know? And Scott, I bought. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, you Scotty. funny. I like you. Scott. And my butthole parked a little bit. And I said, oh my God. My first thought was. He could pre- Can he get me fired? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, oh man. I, I, like, I and I, wa- and I okay. wanted to even, you know, and it's funny because I think a lot of people are like, well, man, if I, you know, if I could just have a conversation with the coach and this <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. No you one don't wants that. You don't want anyone telling you how to do your job, right? But, but it's like, I, I have that. But, today. I'm <laughs> don't fuck it up. Don't yeah, fuck exactly. it up. Right. You do, you know, and it's like, no offense to the man, but I'm bigger than him. And it's like, but I still was like, <laughs> once he told me that, yeah, and I was like, cool, man. Yeah. All of these people I brought here, everybody in the store is Secret Service. So then it starts making sense. I'm like, oh, oh uh, Washington, oh my God. And so then I feel like I'm slowly starting to you vomit. Driving, <laughs> so Many times. Uh, and you're just not picking up the picking up other, And he's like, Man, where do these guys get their employees? You know? <laughs> His brain had to be like, this motherfucker's talking to me like this. Like, does he not know who I am? Like, no respect for who I am. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> His I, I, brain no. had to be nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice. Jesus. He did. Yeah. I'm so Josh. Me. Scotty. I, I which love. Which way do you think they're gonna go with the hire? <laughs> <laughs> he just asked me. It's almost lights, a, lights a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, you're just like. I yeah. guess. That's what I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm saying. Like, people like that. They love those types of moments because you're, you're like, man, I'm sitting on Perkins Road. I'm the head of the newswire right now. <laughs> Anywhere you look, you see my figure. Yeah, cool, man. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this guy yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, this guy like, <laughs> Who I am like, from the sister. Like, I turned around and was like, you know I'm the AD, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's okay. yeah, I mean, and like, funny, I was like, I have to tell him. Like, how does he not know? All right. I don't know how I don't know. And it's so bad. Like, I told, like, I told my wife, and, uh, oh, God, this is, this is, my wife works for LSU. So it's oh like. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> how long did you wait to tell her? Oh, my God. So I told her. That I said, was my asshole husband. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like, you know, I, I, I'm like, I text her. I said, you never know, believe who I ran into. And I say, you know, I say, Scott Woodward. And she goes, holy shit. You know, like. I said, so you know who he is? <laughs> I oh my God, yeah. You know, we just had this. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, this whole thing. I said, well, you, for being a big like sports buff, that one just kind of went over. She's like, how do you not know? You like love Tiger football. I said, I love number seven. You know, like, I love, I don't like he's up there. I, I don't, I don't Matthew. you know, I know three names. I just want them to win. Okay. Like. I went the mom. AD don't fuck it up. Gosh, that's classic, <laughs> it did, bro. Yeah. Has he that been was, back in? He has. Yeah, and I don't know if Galen was messing with me, but he came in the other week to check out the new opening. I just get a text from Galen like midday, like, Scott says hi. <laughs> so then you're like, of course, dumb ass me, right? I text back, Scott, Scott who? <laughs> question mark. Woodward dot dot dot. Oh. Yeah. I know. Who <laughs> done, done, hey, done. I know. Done, now good it's job like not fucking it up. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. Exactly. Really, so now it's I'm like, proud of him. I'm never going to believe it when I'm like, hey, Joshua, nice to meet you. Hey, I'm Scott. I'll be like, nah, nah, you're just fucking yeah, there. Right. Yeah. Everyone's going to yeah, be right. Scott. What are you going to do with the guys? basketball guy? Huh? That's right. Uh huh. But that was cool. You uh, know, if great, he comes bro. back in, I apologize. How, when so he good. told you that he was Scott Ward AD, were you like replaying the conversation? Like, oh my God, I said this. And I did. I said this. And, and it and got like, worse. Yeah. Like, as I told the story, I'm like, no, wait, that's right. This happened. <laughs> it's like you're blacked out you know, the bar. You did. You know, all it was was like the big points. Hi, I'm Scott. And then like, Washington. Let's not screw this up. Yeah. And then, you know, I forgot there are, there are always these, like, he introduced himself. We got some candidates. He's got some, <laughs> we got some yeah. candidates. I think he is. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> asking him if he's, you know, then asking him if he's going to watch the game. <laughs> That was probably the worst thing. Thank you. <laughs> this guy on like, drugs? I probably was like, this guy, he has no idea. <laughs> he has no idea. Not only are you going to watch the game, oh, I'll watch about a quarter of it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, we'll watch us get the hey, shit hey, hey, out hey, of us. Hey, <laughs> hey, last year we were playing Alabama. Did anyone think it was no. going to be a tied ball game going into the fourth? You know, like, I don't think anyone cared that it was like 3 3 or whatever it was. Like, we were just like, we are in the game and it's competitive. Right. Because you know, if we would have beat shit, Alabama they won. last year, it wouldn't have mattered. They should have yeah. won the game. And, we, and if we did, it was like, they're probably, like, last season, it wouldn't have mattered. Like, that, you know. Yeah, we fine. can only beat Alabama, and people around here will be like, okay. 
well, let's give him another year. Josh, that's a classic story, bro. That is unbelievable. That's a that great happened. story. Yeah. <laughs> so I was very appreciative because I'm, I'm, uh, you know, still that's employed. A great story. I'm still employed, but I, mean, I had like, Woody would probably like remember that. That's what he would do. He would probably be like. I was an Iverson. This this guy was like, like, he probably I mean, told his wife. He probably like, you wouldn't believe what just said. This guy had no clue. This guy had no clue. Yeah, he came told in. me not to fuck I up the hire. Introduced myself <laughs> to the guy. I was told surprised. I was surprised he came back and like you know I greeted him when he came hey, to pick up his holiday turkey. It's a great testimony like, for your boot in. Absolutely, he does. Yeah, you know it's, what I mean. Uh, he says it. He says it's the best. So well, then, he, I mean, like if he came back after that, it really is. It really is. You know put, a, mean? put a testimonial on the website, Scott. Yeah. Bad <laughs> says it's the best in the best in Baton Rouge. I'll probably screw that up too, Scott. <laughs> someone, from, yeah. Scott W. Scott T. Scott one T. Works at LSU. That's just you know the whole thing. <laughs> LSU employee. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I think. At, I'm actually at work, like you know, my other job. I'm on set on a movie set, making a film in in December. Really? Uh, yeah, that's what I also do. Yeah, Not yeah. just a thespian, but so I'm on set making this making this movie, and like, I'm in the hotel room in the morning before I go, and I get a text from Galen, and it's like, <laughs> so I told Scott, and then my father-in-law texts me that morning and was like. Your husband, you know, my, and I'm like, oh my God. So I'm texting Gail, I'm like, what did you do? And so I'm like, you know, I'm getting ready in the morning at, at, at like five in the morning. And I'm listening to this the following day. I think it was a, a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God. And I was just so happy that you like, you hit the bullets and were laughing about it. Like this guy. Yeah. And like, you didn't get the nuance of like, he had numerously told me who he was. <laughs> no, it was, it, it was and I still just. That's a great story. And I am like, I love LSU football. So I'm sorry. How long have you been down here? Uh, 15, so seven years. Okay. I came down to go to LSU. It's a pretty 15. good seven year run. Yeah, I did. I got to see some, some mm -hmm. cool people, mm -hmm. you know. It was funny because my first, after my first year, I remember giving uh, an interview to the, oh gosh, what is the big LSU newspaper? Revel? The Reveille. The Reveille. Is that how you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. No, it's good to know. I'm still asking that seven years later. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce it? Would you ever on campus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that, you know, they're, they're doing interviews for people uh, during like less thing of like, you know, should we bring less back? And this oh, was, you know, from the 16. And it was like, I was so vocal. Yeah. First year <laughs> LSU student. I'm like, fire that motherfucker, you know? Like, we can't, and it's like the first year I've ever watched college football too. So it was like, oh, I, I knew exactly what's going on. Josh, I get it. But I did. I went to every LSU game my first year and got to see, you know, crazy uh, playoff Lenny. And I was like, that dude might be like the greatest college running back. I so think your first year was Lenny's sophomore was, season? Yeah. Oh, wow. That'll make you fall in love with it. Well, that was the thing. It's like we were so huge, and then we fell apart at mm -hmm. the end. We got beat. We got beat by Bama, of course, but not only that, I think we got beat the following week we by it. Arkansas, yeah, we lost and A&M, and it was like... Wheels fell off. Yeah. Ole Miss beat them? Yeah. I mean, it was... It was a disaster. It was when a calamity. Run, yeah, when you run three downs for I mean, yeah. three and a half quarters, that was okay, kind of... Okay, don't get us started, Josh. Yeah. We've, already, we've okay. already done this. We've already done this. I got you. Done this. This. You've already <laughs> fed me. the third last rant this year. Right. But I was... Get me going on this dumb son of a bitch to close out the week. Would you He walks into Iverson, he's like, no, I don't know who you are. Yeah, right. Yeah, Les, we got yours over here. I mean... Actually, step in the back. So the second year, when they brought him back before they fired him in season, it was like it got so bad that I like I quit eating fucking canes because you know <laughs> I was like I can't I can't do it. I'm not supporting this dumbass. I don't even want the canes. <laughs> yeah. you know, like I can't do this. And Is so, Bailey's open again? <laughs> Uh, but it was great. Son of a bitch holding a box combo. <laughs> oh, it makes me sick. Oh my god! And the stupid golden uh, the dog bite doesn't even like him. Jeff you know? and Ken are Josh owes two fifty to the swear jar. We'll let it slide. Great story. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, man. all good. Uh, Josh, how's it been oh, over the, the new spot, bro? Hour. How's it been over the new spot? It's been so good. I bet, man. Man, breakfast. Bet. Is We've been over there today. twice. It's great. Yeah, breakfast, breakfast burritos, which were looking great. And I'm back in the kitchen, and I'm watching them get the stuff going. And you know, uh, some kitchens you see like the bag egg, right? Liquid mm -hmm. egg, mm -hmm. as they call it. Delicious. They aren't. The <laughs> no, chef, they're The chefs awful. at Iverstein are, are cracking dozens of eggs in a bowl and whisking them. Wow. So we're getting like farm fresh eggs in these uh, in these burritos. Yeah, it's like the McDonald's commercial when they'd have that one egg. One egg. Yeah, they're like, they're not doing that back there. No, they're they not aren't. making a McMuffin they with aren't. real but egg. Right. But, but the square. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Iverstein says. Yeah. So yeah, no doubt. No we're doubt. doing breakfast burritos, which have been become a you big brought them last week. They were awesome. Yeah. Sauce is unbelievable. Oh mm. my goodness, it's so good. Sauces. And the Cuban sandwich here is, uh, God, is, is on our lunch menu, and so they're really good, but we're still doing kind of the meat and three. 
We've got, I just saw him put into the smoker this morning, uh, shoulder steaks. Mm. Nice. Which is coming from the Boston butt, and they're just fantastic. Uh, and butcher bundles, bro. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yeah, easy, that's been right? I mean, real yeah. easy, real convenient. We have some things coming up which are going to blow like the bundles wide open, I think. Nice. Yeah, we're, talking, we're talking choices, mm. which is going to be good for the people. And um, just kind of revamping the whole system. So hopefully it'll be really good. Fresh meat delivered to your doorstep. You don't have to get in your car, spend $5 a gallon on gas. We bring it to you. Straight to your house, Scott. Straight to your Straight house. Straight to your house, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> You're delivering. Iversteinfarms.com. Iversteinfarms.com. New location on Perkins Road. Just right down Perkins. If you're heading towards Essen and Blue Bonnet from College and Acadian, right as you pa- uh, pass over Essen Lane on your left is the Perkins Crossing Shopping Center. Right there on the corner is Iversteins uh, Farms. You can look them up online at Iversteinsfarms.com. Top right, click the Butcher Bundle. Butcher you can Bundle. Get the deliveries. And get on the uh, on the route, and as uh, Josh says, yeah, it, great it, choices. It, it, if uh, you know, if Scott Woodward listens <laughs> consistently, <laughs> and uh, aside from the apology, if he signs up for a bundle, you know, buddy, I will get you a pack of boudin on Yo. me. Yeah, because you didn't fuck it up. <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, have a great week. We appreciate so everybody really out there, you. man. Yeah, hit that like and share button. Go see our friend Josh over at Iversteins. Uh, he is back there. Like he said, he's back there in the kitchen whipping it up, man. They got fresh lunch every day. They got breakfast every day. And they got the wide selection of, uh, of great uh, farm uh, meats that they have over there at Iverstein Farms. Iversteinfarms.com. Click on the top right, Butcher Bundles, and pick it up today. Great week over here at FM Digital Media. We appreciate you being there. Hit the like and share button. We'll be back with you Monday morning. Mikey coming up today, 4.30 this afternoon from uh, Uncle Earl's. Come Remember, uh, Yes. We got a hundred dollar bar tab for you over there. If you show up and you want to hang out and have a couple of drinks on us, stop in at Uncle Earl's today and check out Mike'd Up four thirty to six o'clock right here at FM Digital Media. Have a great weekend. We'll be back with you Monday morning. And oh, from SEC Media Days. SEC Media Days. Yeah, that's right, that's the plan right. is in motion. I'm sure. Yes. Well, I'm sure of it. Wow. Um, at least you didn't like make fun of the AD hire to the AD. Like, and I'm not really sure <laughs> about this Scott Woodward coming from Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I just wanted the one more step. Not only am I worried about who they're going to hire, I'm worried about the dipshit that's hiring him. Yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> I mean, like, who of, is yeah, this I could, guy? Like, I could have went in and been like, he's here one year and he fires the coach who just won a championship? What the fuck? <laughs> and he gave him a raise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyways. Iversteinfarms.com. That was great. Later, man.